And welcome back once again, letting the microphones. Welcome back to uh, what we hope is a successful and uh, working version of <laughs> the Legends of the Drowned Dials, a homebrew D and D fifth ed campaign, campaign two, the Great Confusion. I am the host and GM. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. Going around my table, I have my players right here, starting on my left with uh, Pat. Hi, my name is Pat, and I am playing Inigo Montoya. No, I'm playing Silas Marsh. Uh, that is an in-joke that you want from behind the scenes. So, anyways, <laughs> forward. Hi, uh, I am Mavi, and I am playing Annie, and I will be monitoring if anything is going on on Twitch. If anything, if you cannot hear us, let us know. I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medric, half-orc cleric, and I currently have cat aggro. <laughs> so, uh, as was alluded to there, and if you happen to be someone who's watched some of what we've done before, you might be wondering, hey, wasn't there supposed to be like an episode a while ago? And there was. Um, there were some audio setup problems with uh, the new arrangement that I've made here. Uh, and so all of my audio was missing, which, frankly, I talk too much. So... Uh, a lot of the exposition, unfortunately, was lost uh, and uh, expanded and expounded from my notes, meaning um, that it was now lost in the ether. So we're going to not recreate, but we are going to have a scene in which we'll try to um, rediscover and uh, talk about what happened, hopefully this time properly recorded, <laughs> so that we all remember, uh, which hopefully means that not too many details have, have been left out uh, but there will inevitably be a few, so do apologize for that. That said, um, in a briefish version of a summary, uh, there were further deals made, there were further arrangements made, and further discoveries made uh, in the house in the ether when the entirety of the Harquin mansion was pulled into some extra planar pocket, um, apparently by a, uh, well, what people have referred to as a hag, that seems to be a convenient handle to describe uh, Crypt Wallow for the moment. Uh, and in exchange for some help, um, Silas uh, uh, both bargained on behalf of the people here, uh, as well as bargaining on behalf of his uh, distant patron, uh, the Mother, or Mother Hydra, um, to have some assistance in returning or bringing Mother Hydra to this plane. Uh, in return for helping to uh, solve Cryptwallow's problem, in particular one of the hags who was uh, involved in a scheme, it seems. Some of the details still aren't exactly clear, I think, to people, but a scheme to bind an ancient dragon uh, and thus increase their own power. The ancient dragon seems to have been bound uh, to the Baroness. Some of that you have yet to really convey back and forth, uh, partially because Silas was um, semi-isolated in a semi-plane uh, and not able to speak freely. Nonetheless, another uh, assailant at the party was someone who had beef with the Baron, uh, sometimes known as the Diamond, sometimes also strangely known as the Shadow, and also sometimes referred to as Gauld, who apparently is the brother of of the Baron in a previous life or previous experience. Uh, Gauld accused his brother of having left him to die back when his brother was a notorious pirate. Now, all of that is in the past. The, wor the world has shifted once again. The, the anchors, which seem to be some sort of demonic entities, were released, uh, making the entire... Uh, Harquin mentioned return once more the, the material plane. Strangely, though, most people don't seem to have noticed that the party was disrupted by this alternative experience. Most of the party goers, in fact, have no recollection of it whatsoever, or at least don't seem to. The only d definite impacts uh, is you notice that Ardwin Cartwright lost an ear due to some intervention that you were doing before in plucking off of his transformed face a large jewel to give to one of the demon anchors. Apparently, that his ear had grew back though because I I give him a, a heal. He healed, but his ear did not grow back. 
Um, not even a little bit? That's a not, different spell. <laughs> that's an yeah. entirely different spell. I'll learn it later. Um, however, after being administrated to and having several glasses of wine, uh, it's become the talk of the store, a talk of the, the party, and without too much pain, uh, or at least much, not, not much more than annoyance, uh, Ardwin has turned it to his favor briefly. Um, the only other noticeable changes are the looks that Melora and Verendel are giving you. Both of them, while they had been in that other plane where their masked versions had become part of them, uh, they awakened, I guess you might say, partially conscious of what was going on due to your interventions, and now have uh, curious questions, at least in their eyes, that they won't voice at the party. Meanwhile, Silas, who had snuck in to the party and had been dragged along when the house transformed into this other uh, space and who himself had transformed not into a representation of his mask, but rather into a half form in a demiplane, has also been returned to his corporeal self. And remembering a discovery that he had made during in that other plane, that there was a secret room uh, hidden within the Baron's, uh, the Baron's study, uh, had quickly made his way to try to discover it, and had, although the Baron's voice was being heard as he entered his own room. Downstairs, Silas fled uh, through, the, rather, through the hidden door and down the stairs to find a hidden office of sorts. Part office, part sort of personal museum. Uh, a, what looks like a collection of things that a seafarer might keep as memories and sometimes valuables of perhaps the storied previous lifetime as a pirate captain. And so that's where we're going to begin. Um, also, nowhere near at the party, or nowhere after uh, the party, did anyone see um, the, the, uh, the deer and the doe which were two of the costumes being worn. Um, you had figured out uh, partially that the deer was actually uh, actually the diamond and or gold, uh, and the doe was Veer, uh, who you had met before, the druid who came and, and uh, put out the massive forest fire, which is when you first met uh, Veer and Gold on the road. Uh, so however, we did successfully do that one job, we did find him, we just didn't know we found him. Exactly. Exactly. It seems as though maybe you were on the right track, just didn't realize you were. And also, the, the, you also discovered that it, it wasn't just the diamond who was potentially whaling uh, uh, carts and, and wagons back and forth uh, to the city, because you actually discovered a whole cult of, of uh, feverishly hungry um what were they? They were... Oh, the word has left me for the moment. Yeah, they were hy hyena people. Oh, yeah. Knolls? Knolls, that was it, yes. Holistic knoll people. But meanwhile, Silas, you find yourself in this room downstairs. It seems as though no one detected your entry. At least there is no one chasing after you. Uh, the room upstairs, the, the doorway seems to have closed. But you can see, you can hear uh, talk from upstairs. Um, you can hear three voices, two of which you recognize, and one which is unfamiliar to you. I don't think you ever heard him speak. Three men, the Baron. You hear his uh, deep and uh, and angry voice. You hear uh, uh, Chamberlain Aknarada with his weaselly and. Uh, concerned voice, but also maintaining a certain amount of of strength, certain amount of of, uh, of um, unperturbedness, and a third voice, a gruff, deeper voice that seems uncultured and um, also strangely unemotional. Uh, where you are right now, unless you were to take time and spend time listening, you can hear the voices, but you can't make out the words. Uh, around you, I will describe a few of the things you see immediately. I had mentioned some of them before. Hopefully this is roughly the same as I've gone into a bit more detail. Um, you do see uh, shelving and uh, uh, 
a sort of glass case inside of which you see five uh, spaces which would hold presumably swords, four of which are full right now. One sword or one space is empty. Each of these seems like very fancy swords all behind some sort of tempered glass, uh, a display case almost of sorts. Another part of the room you see uh, several large uh, sea-worn uh, uh, trunks. Uh, they all seem to be locked and kind of stacked in one side. Uh, you see uh, a few pieces of wood kind of piled up along one side, if you want to take a closer look at those. Uh, and a desk, um, where it seems like a large map has been sprawled out across the desk. So, do you want to take a closer look at any of that, or do you want to take a listen to the voices upstairs? You have a feeling that um, if they were to come down, there's only one direction in and out, at least at the moment, without any other uh, intervention. Um, so if they are going to come at any point in time, uh, they're going to come here, which may mean you have limited time. Uh, also, it seems to be your exit route, um, so you're not, unless you have, as I said, any other magical means at your disposal. Okay. Well, Silas is going to look at the map first. Okay. Um, do you have any sort of uh, navigation or ship uh, ship traveling skills? I think you do. Yep. Okay. He's got them both. Okay. Go ahead and make an appropriate roll. Um, what do you have as both? You have... Uh, let's see. Water vehicles and navigation tools. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and say that you get a synergy bonus from having both, so make the roll at advantage. Okay. Uh... I'll use navigation tools because that's better. Okay, 26. So you go over to the map and you can see there's actually a stack of maps here. They're very old maps for the most part. There's a newer one kind of on top. Uh, and it seems to be uh, relating to the area around Escus. So shipping routes and that sort of thing. Uh, plotting different times. Um, none of the other, uh, well, Icro is on the, on the map which is the nearby island. All the other islands are further away. But there are, are sort of the beginnings of routes out to the other islands, including uh, rough sailing times. That one seems fairly normal. As you're flipping through the maps, though, there are a number of that, uh, uh, detail areas around Alaria, uh, detail areas around the Perfume uh, Reef, and then further into the western Ovid Sea, which is where the majority of the islands uh, are. Uh, in particular, you can see the seal of uh, a, uh, a rose on the corners of the map, and you see the, the uh, royal declaration uh, of, the, of the Alarian Empire on the maps, uh, and recognizing very quickly that these were official maps created um, for uh, the, the emperor, or for the, the king, sorry, the king, kingdom, uh, the realm of Alaria. Uh, they do date back. They are officially dated. Um, given you're not exactly sure how much time passed during the confusion, um, but if you assume that there's sort of a lack of dating during the confusion, these would date back to almost 40 years ago. Um, and they seem to detail a couple of routes. In particular, they, they note uh, the, the passageways of a fleet, the, the first fleet of the Alar Alarian Navy, including a planned side route for the personal ship of Admiral Montrose. Uh, the, the note of, of that is simply an annotation of that particular ship to take it off to one side, called the Coriopsis. Um, and you also note that on this official map, there are additional routes that have been plotted, not by the original map plotter, but in fact it looks as though a competent yet other hand was plotting routes uh, to intercept that singular route of when the ship has moved off from its official, or from the group. Um, it looks as though a, a, an official map has gotten a hold of, of the routes they were planning to take, and someone had used that to plot an intercept course. Many of the other uh, uh, maps are of similar make. Not all of them are official Alarian maps. Some of them definitely look like they were 
competent maps, but the routes were added by the same hand which annotated that other map. Um, detailing a number of different routes back and forth across, especially the Olvip Sea. Uh, but there are routes that go onto the eastern, uh, the eastern passageway as well, uh, the, all the way up to the north where the Karavenkin Empire uh, sits, which is made up of primarily hobgoblins uh, is where they are, known as a fierce empire with Karavenka. And apparently they have good cheese. Yes, there is actually a great uh, Caravankan cheese empire as well. Parallels the original empire, but is more commercial. Uh, with the 26, though, uh, if you have additional questions or if you have additional things you think might be insights into those maps, please ask. Um, so the one with the intercept course for Admiral Montrose's ship, the Coriopsis? Yep. Uh, what's the... I suppose the the map itself you're saying dates back about forty years. That's right. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So this was something for a trip that Admiral Montrose was taking forty years ago, or was it a map from forty years ago and his trip was put on later? Uh, <clears throat> The uh, map was probably a copy of a standard map that they have of the, of the routes. The individual routes that were added for his fleet and for his side mission, um, those are dated back to 40 years ago. In fact, there would be an annotation from the, the, uh, the cartographer himself that added them on, so it was, it was an official route. Um, but the map itself is an older map, as the seas have not changed much, and they've been mapped out a long, long yeah. time ago. So the trip, the Admiral Montrose's trip was 40 years ago. That's right. Near as we can tell with all the weirdness. Right. 40 um, plus, who knows? <laughs> where was the, the Coriopsis going? Uh, it was traveling to... Oh, I didn't note that, but it should be to one of the islands in the uh, eastern Olvip Sea. So it had been traveling along... So uh, as as a I will the island specifically doesn't happen to have any particular plot yeah. importance at the moment, but, but not our island, not this island. So the okay. the the map route um, to give a, a brief geography, um, Eskis and Iro are essentially in the north or sorry the southeast corner of the world, if you will. Uh, to the north is where the Alarian Islands are, and there's a narrow corridor which leads from the Alarian Islands all the way up to the Caravankan Empire. To the west of these islands is another narrow corridor. In the middle is what's called the Perfume Reef, and on the other side is the big uh, eastern Olvip Sea. Uh, and in that eastern Olvip Sea, there's a number of different islands. Uh, the characters have encountered Takara before. Um, there's also, uh, uh, well, I, don't, I can't name them all off, but there's a number of islands in that area, yeah, including several which are uncharted because they're charts. Okay, so it was to an island that's to the west of us. That's right, to the far okay. west, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, actually, with your, with your knowledge of the sea, this is a common trading corridor. Um, it's, it's difficult sometimes to get through the Perfume Reef, but it's very much worth it. Uh, the alternative is literally sail halfway around the world or try to go, um, well, there really isn't much overland that you can go. Um, so it's not uncommon for a lot of goods, especially silks and uh, metals and so forth, to come from the Western Sea or the Western Olive Sea all the way over. Um, that also includes uh, Massilia, I believe it's called, uh, which is the island with the volcano, which is the seat of uh, the Ignean power. Okay. Um, I don't think I have anything else for the maps. Okay. Um, uh, this is, is, is this a desk with drawers in it that the, that the maps were on? It is. Yes. Okay. Uh, he'll search through the drawers. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make an investigation check. Are you going to do this quickly or are you going to do this taking your time? You can still hear the voices um, loudly upstairs. So at least for the moment, there's no concern, but you have more time. See, um, he'll take his time with this one. He can be quicker with the other stuff. 
this is probably where anything important is. Okay. Uh, uh, investigation. Okay. 18. Uh, top couple of drawers are pretty basic. There's quills and ink. Uh, there's uh, rulers and plotting on mats. Um, there's also a couple of, of uh, compasses there. Um, you do kind of notice the compasses, they're fairly small, they're, they're about palm, smaller than palm sized. Um, the one odd thing you notice you pass by them is they do not point to north, which is kind of strange, uh, but they do otherwise look like normal compasses. Um, that's kind of the big broad uh, drawer just underneath the top of the desk. If you go down the left hand side where there are uh, another drawer which has uh, what looks like blank pages and, and uh, official scrolls, um, or official um, uh, official paper for scrolls. Um, they do con contain the seal of the, uh, or rather the, the imprint of uh, the uh, uh, Alarian realm. Um, essentially it's official paper that would be given for official documents sent back probably to the, the, uh, the king and queen, uh, as well as uh, some wax uh, in that one. And the furthest one down you find is locked. It's a uh, fairly large drawer um, but it is locked, um, and so you kind of pull on it, and no opening. Um, hey. uh, he is going to pocket one of the strange compasses. Maybe okay. we can figure out what, what's strange about it later. I have no spell slots, and I'm not going to spend 10 minutes on casting Detect Magic. Um, uh, he will take out the gnomish tinkering tools and try to open the lock like he did with the door, based purely on luck. Okay, go ahead. They are good tools, uh -huh. so that does help. That gives you advantage, but... Sorry? They are good tools, and I believe oh, that yeah, gave you yeah. advantage before. Uh... Yeah, I don't have... Uh thieves tools so i'll make a dexterity roll wow okay double eights Perfect. unfortunately uh the uh the locks uh very very sturdy uh it looks as though this this for this heavy wooden desk uh it was the locks were specifically built for this desk not added after uh, and unfortunately you're unable to to pick the locks Okay. Uh, Got to remember to buy a crowbar. <laughs> For when I don't have any around. Don't you have the bag of holding? I suppose if your crowbar's in that, yeah. Um, All of my normal tools that I would have on me are in the bag of holding right now. Okay. I'll... Uh, Pull out the crowbar and see if he's going to test what level of resistance there is. Uh, like if it's just he pushes a little bit and it pops right open, that's good. If it starts to get to the point of something is splintering, then he's going to stop because okay. that's going to be too loud. So as you kind of put the, the uh, pry bar in and kind of get it a little bit wedged, you find the drawer does not move very much, so it's a little bit hard to wedge the, the thing in easily. Uh, maybe you could shove it in, but uh, it does not give. Uh, and in fact, yeah, you, you, you find that without, without taking some time to hammer onto this crowbar, you can't even yeah. really get it in to give some leverage. Um, okay. the, the desk also is heavy uh, hardwood, so um, it doesn't splinter, yeah. uh, but it does creak a little bit um, as you uh, as you kind of put some pressure onto it. Yep. Well, no, it uh, doesn't look like it's going to move anytime soon, so he'll just put the crowbar away. And uh, you said there were pieces of wood and there were some um, uh, chests... And there was a uh, a rack with four swords in it behind glass. Was that it? Uh, I believe so. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, in the far end of the room, you actually also see a table with a round table with chairs and a small stove down here. So it's the kind of place that also could be used as a bit of a meeting room. 
it does imply that more than one person come down here. Yeah. More than one person comes down um, here. He'll take a quick look at the table. <laughs> Are, is there any notes or anything on it, or is it empty? Uh, hey, kitty. The... <clears throat> Uh, the uh, Ray's hair looks delicious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the table is Cat empty. It, it shows signs of uh, of pock marks and scrapes um, from probably knives, maybe uh, not yeah. as in someone cutting up their their dinner, but so much as as knives have been thrown onto the table. Uh, you do see a, uh, a a deck of cards there as well. Okay, he'll uh, just ignore that. Uh, he'll move to the wood pieces of wood next. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the pieces of wood appear to be a number of uh, nameplates. Uh, you recognize them as nameplates that will be taken off the sides of ships. I thought that might be it. Uh, including, uh, let's see, uh, the... Uh, the Coriopsis is there. The Dazzling okay. Morning Pearl. Uh, Ashana K. Uh, and uh, FMPLW is what's written on the nameplate. Uh, and finally, you find one which actually rings a little bit more to you <clears throat> as you see the nameplate of the Sharpened Coin which you know to be the ship, supposedly, that the Baron once once uh, flew, or once sailed. Mm. <clears throat> Maybe he flew um, it, too. I do have the uh, box set for... Uh, <laughs> for yeah. uh, uh, that's cat aggro. <laughs> I'm glad my cat's not looking, because she'd be getting ideas. Get ideas. Yeah. At some um, point, we're going to have all three cats represented. <laughs> and he's a cat be- now. It's going yeah. to be chaos. Um, <clears throat> Silas will make a quick... If I disappear... <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Silas will make a quick note in his book of the names. Um, and I can type those for you later. Just yeah, uh, that's fine, just as long as we have them. Um, and he'll take a quick look at the chests on the other side of the room. Uh, if they're locked... He'll just try to like lift a corner and see if it is if there's something in it or if it feels like an empty box. Okay. Um, again, make a uh, an investigation check <clears throat> as you poke around. You can hear now that it sounds like the voices upstairs have quieted, but you're not sure what that means. You did hear pacing back and forth. Okay. Okay. Uh, Twenty-two investigation. Um, you find that among the chests, uh, first of all, it's a variety of chests. They were definitely not all bought at the same time or from the same manufacturer. Mm-hmm. They're of various ages. Some are, are showing signs of being uh, being waterlogged or had been dumped into the water at some point. Um, a few of them do seem to be much more pristine. Wow, that is that is serious cat aggro. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, you do find that a, a, a large majority of them, there's about a dozen chests in total, different sizes. Uh, many of the bigger ones are locked. Uh, a couple on top, the, the, on the top are not. Uh, in one of them, you find a, uh, a collection uh, wrapped, or not wrapped, but sort of stored in uh, uh, wood shavings of a number of bottles of dark liquid. Uh, and from some of the labels that are still remaining, it looks as though it's a lot of uh, rum from uh, different islands in the western Olvip. Uh, some of them have been opened, but most of them seem to be in pristine condition. Uh, so it was about a, uh, a dozen bottles, um, some very large, wrapped in um, kind of that sort of uh, uh, plant fiber web that's sometimes wrapped around the bottle of them. Mm. Um, some of them look like they probably were refillable bottles or had been refilled, so they're not necessarily as exotic as others. Uh, you also find in another, uh, packed into uh, what looks like shredded paper, 
are a few uh, objects of art. Um, there's a couple of, of very well-crafted marble statues. Uh, there's also what looks like a, uh, a, uh, a vase, a very familiar make. Uh, and as you look upon it, you recognize the same sort of markings you've seen on a two, actually, in this case, previous vases yeah. um, uh -oh. of uh, uh, Athlonian make. That's going in the bag of holding. Okay. As you grip on and, it, you can feel sorry? this sort of coldness on the vase itself. Yeah. Um, then Silas is going to open his book in to Annie and Medrick. Uh, he's just going to quickly write, Found Baron's Pirate Office, Athlonian vase here, Get the one from the solarium. We can't leave them. Um, and yeah, I don't. Oh, he's really not equipped to uh, open up any of the other stuff. So. You do kind of tap them a little bit, and you can tell they are filled with different things. One of them kind of jingles yeah. a little bit as you tap it, which means it's probably full of coins. Uh, but extraordinary. How heavy is it? Yeah, extraordinarily heavy. We're talking like a few thousand coins, probably, so several hundred yeah. pounds. Uh, actually, is it under 300 pounds? Um, probably not. Not for the whole chest. Yeah. Oh, well, too bad. Um, well, I think he is going to sit down and he will start casting detect magic ritually but he's ready to uh, get to either confront anyone who comes down or to get out uh, if it uh, most likely somebody comes down before 10 minutes have passed okay uh, well as you begin uh, to cast that spell uh, we'll turn over to Annie and Medrick who have heard this message in their heads, uh, found another vase, must get the one from the solarium, can't leave it here. Now the party is still kind of going, but winding down. The musicians have all retired. It seems as though the lead musician that was there and seeming to lead the whole thing is vanished. Don't know where they went to. Um, although you might have a suspicion because I believe you recognized uh, Dale, who had been among the band and potentially uh, manipulated the music to his own ends. The Baron uh, has uh, retired off to his office. You also saw Akramada uh, following quickly behind, and a very uh, large, angry-looking uh, man who you've seen before, uh, the head of the guard. Uh, he has a very scarred-up face and a constant scowl on his face. And they all seem to go off together, um, and you hear the Baron's office door open and slam closed. The Baroness is still entertaining the party. Everything seems to be as normal. Sable is nowhere to be seen, uh, but you know that she sometimes has vanished before as well. Um, and right now, uh, Cartwright uh, is kind of leading his own little corner of all the people who have come over to him. Uh, Melora is still kind of hovering towards him, every once in a while looking up towards you, Medric, with a uh, sort of we-will-talk look on her face. Uh, and Verandel is uh, outside. So. My response is, we had already decided to come back for that phase because it's too dangerous to take it. And can we switch the map to our characters? Yeah, just... Uh... Because other than the bag of holding, none of us have any way to get anything out of the building. Yeah, that's a good point. We can tell you where it is. Pick it up later, or we can move it somewhere convenient. Uh, well, he was in... He was in the other world's solarium. He might be able to get to this one. And I have so a plan. I will switch over to the map page, but the folks... You folks should be able to see. This is a rough approximation. People yep. have, have moved around a bit and, and uh, 
have an all. Uh, oh, and with uh, the Baron trailing behind, uh, you did see uh, the uh, the Raven, which you had recognized from the other world, is here and traveling with uh, the Baron. I'll just leave you right there. Uh, I don't know if I know where <laughs> Ardwin is on this particular version of the map, but we will just uh, uh, leave it as that. So weirdly, the party has kind of go back to normal. Um, and I'll say the Baroness is back in her prime holding court. So you sent that message back. There is an opportunity here if you want to do anything in terms of talking with the, the people here, but the party is definitely winding down. Um, if there's nothing in particular you want to do, or if you want to bug out now, you certainly can do so. We can go back to finish up what uh, Pi what Silas was doing. I'm trying to think of a way to... Uh, I'm assuming I'm next to Annie, and we were just discussing this, like, away from any prying ears. You can easily find a quiet corner. Okay. Yeah. There are still there like a buzzing about, and they still flower are... Flower pot are, anywhere? A flower pot? Uh, sure. I'm asking this to both Annie and the DM. So what What if we took the vase and put flowers in it and left it in a corner and then told Silas where it is and he can just walk away with a flower pot? Because that doesn't sound like a good idea. Someone else could take and another servant could take it. It could get broken. Well, and the, the vase was sealed, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's one. Yeah, it's one. Like these ones, we can't open. We don't want them open. Gotcha. Actually, so, oh, so, I'm out so, of so, ideas. If you if you guys can't get it, he'll give it a try. Um, he has an idea. He's got like one spell left in the ring, and that's all he's got. Um, but yeah, no, I, uh, Annie is not, at this point, we've gone through a lot tonight. We have information that we need to process. I'm good with the poking around. I'm just going to enjoy the rest of my evening. Just do the normal talking to people. Social socializing, getting acquainted with people, the dancing, do do the normal closing of the ball situation, and then go home, and then we can regroup tomorrow, and figure out what's going on, and put all the information that we have together, and go from there. If we need to talk to the Baron again, I wonder how difficult that'll be. I already have planted that in his ear. That's good. Um, as you're talking, you see coming out of the library, which you know leads also into the Baron's study, uh, the guard captain uh, comes out and is stalking towards the front door, kind of heading up that hallway. Uh, you can find him right there. And Aknarada comes out, uh, steps kind of before, trying not to be uh, obvious about it, but kind of steps out into the hallway and then takes that moment to straighten his uh, doublet uh, and kind of arrange his mask a little bit more, freshen himself up, and then goes from a somewhat worried expression to uh, it melts away to a very practiced smile as he walks out into the area uh, and uh, talks to a number of people along the way uh, and then strides into the ballroom. Kind of, if you hadn't have seen that moment of transition, you would think there was nothing wrong at all. But that does indicate that, for whatever reason, uh, uh, Akhenrata was a little bit ruffled, but quickly transformed hey, himself. I'll point him out to Annie. Did you, did you see that? He looked really worried. I mean, I did just basically provoke the Baron into, uh, with information that we need to discuss about gold, so... And I am whispering this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, about five minutes into your ten minutes, Silas, you hear the uh, sound of the 
secret passageway upstairs uh, opening. Uh, it's very, very quiet, but it's very, very quiet down here, and you're just focusing on the spell, so there's not many, any other noise you're making. But you can hear um, the opening upstairs, and then do you remember when you were coming down? Maybe you don't remember. Maybe you didn't really notice. There's The stairs were a li needed a little bit of work. Uh, maybe you missed it on the way down. Maybe you were lucky. But you do hear heavy footsteps on the top of the stairs and coming down in your direction. Okay. Um. Hmm. Where are the stairs on this? Uh, on Is this that map? up at the top? That's right. There's two sets of stairs uh, that, that are there. Okay. So one is coming down, the other one is... They actually both go up from where you are. Uh, okay. It seems as though they were meant for other purposes and then closed off and then paid part of this room. Okay. The ceiling here is fairly high. It's about a 12 to 14 foot ceiling. Uh, it's a You're in... Effectively, you're pretty sure you're in the basement, which would have had a large amount of storage capacity. This small space must have been carved out of it or something like that. Okay. Um, over where the chests are, um, I don't want to see them on here, but... Um, yeah, they're they're more or less in, in this area. I didn't get a chance to add yeah. them to the... the... Uh, Silas is going to crouch down uh, near the chests on the side opposite from the stairs and just make it look like there's another chest around him. Okay. Um, as you're crouching down... Similar to the other bigger chests. As you're crouching down by the chest, you actually notice that there is something that was knocked over. It looks like a mannequin of some kind that was wearing a heavy suit of armor. It's kind of uh, blue uh, and black shades. Um, and the armor looks like it's a really good quality armor. Um, it has uh, workings in the leather of what looks like spell work um, that seem to resemble sea creatures, strangely enough. Hmm. Uh, and go ahead. And, and that's, make... uh, and that's uh, lying down on its side like the mannequin was knocked over and the armor is on it. That's right. So it was a standing mounted thing at one okay. point, but it was knocked over. There's a bit Does of dust it look on like it I too, can so. lift the mannequin? You can certainly try. Um, the armor looks kind of heavy. The mannequin is probably light, which is one of the reasons it was probably top heavy and fell over. Because, um, uh, dang. okay. Yeah, he'll just uh, sort of sidle up next to the mannequin and uh, hide under the illusion of the chest. Okay. He'll um, see what's going on. Let's see here now. Do, do, do. As you hear uh, the Baron um, talking um, conversationally, um, and you hear occasionally the response of a caw, uh, or call of a raven. I forget. what the, Crow's caw. What do ravens do? <laughs> <laughs> I think it is a gronk kind of thing. <laughs> Um, yeah, ravens are something like a gronk. Right. Uh, but you do kind of recognize that it's not just a random noise that seems to be made. It does appear to have some some weirdly timed intelligence behind the responses. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm pretty sure I know who the raven is. Um, you... I really want to hit it with a magic rock. Uh, oh, right. I gotta open it up in here. Um, sorry, I've got two different browsers by mistake. All right. Uh, and you hear, you hear snippets of the conversation. Uh, the Baron is, uh, and I won't do it all in real time, but just the, the conversational mm -hmm. bits. Uh, the Baron is concerned by what the captain told him, but doesn't understand why he doesn't remember it. Um, doesn't understand how this alters the, alters the deal or how or how this uh, endangers the, the Baroness. Um, seems to be a lot of genuine concern, but you can also do an inside check if you want to try to understand it better. Sure, I'll give it a try. 
I'm going to plus one. No. Um, yeah, it's it's difficult, complicated emotion, and he has a kind of a... a he's dropped the, the sort of formal presentation he had uh, uh, before. So it, it's kind of almost a more crude sounding voice. Um, and you find it difficult to kind of interpret because it doesn't fit with what you had before. What is I'm the, too focused on the crow. What is the, the DC of your illusion? Uh, let's see. Da, da, da. Where is my... Let's see. I have it here. Spell, uh, the save for an intelligence investigation check is 15. Okay. Um, I will make him roll uh, this one, which is a little different, but it is. Uh, there we go. Nifty. So oh, no. Oh, no. I thought Sorry. he might notice that there was an extra chest anyways, so that's um, fine. Well, as you see, it's the a mimic. Baron, you hear the Baron, really, because uh, you're kind of hiding behind something, so your vision's a little obscured. Um, although you're hiding behind your own illusion. I don't think you can see through your own illusions. I don't know. It's weird. Well, uh, you... if someone makes an intelligence check, they get to see through the illusion. I'm assuming the caster probably does, too. Yeah, it's true. It's weird. All right. Um, yeah. But in this case, uh, you hear the Baron uh, stop uh, on the stairs and stop speaking, and you can hear him whispering, and the crow starts to fly through the room. Oh, well, time for me to get out of here. I'm uh, going to pick up the leather armor, and if the mannequin comes with, it comes with, and I'm going to use my last dimension door. I don't actually have you to, on this map, uh, do I? <laughs> well, it won't to, matter. I, second, I, yep. Um, uh, to, uh, let's see. I'm going to teleport up to the solarium and hope nobody is there. Okay. Uh, let me check dimension door. How specific do you need to be? Uh, uh, it's within 90 feet to a place that uh, I think you know just let's see yeah some of them are, are picky like you know have to teleport you have to have been there or yeah well see dimension or... door is what i used to get into the room from outside and there i couldn't even see it i just knew where I mean, the room was i think you could see through the window or something but um it's at least a direct line of sight or a direct line uh let's see uh range. dimension door Place teleport from current location to any other spot within range it can be a place you can see, one you can visualize, or one you can describe by stating distance and direction. Okay. Uh, let's see. And I can bring along objects as long as their weight doesn't exceed what I can carry. So 150 pounds. 150 pounds? Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, then, Double check. Uh, in a very obvious display yeah. of magic... <laughs> Uh, hey, they... it's behind. It's still behind the the semi see through illusion. Yeah, but it, it they they knew Oof. something was up. Yeah, um, there's a bamf. Uh, there is most definitely a bamf to the main floor. And I don't know if I have you. On, I do have you on this map. Okay. While things are buffering, update on the cat. She's now sitting on the uh, freezer and staring at me because she's mad that I won't let her lick my hair. <laughs> yep. <laughs> tasty, tasty hair. The um, spiteful look. My, mine is sleeping right now because she's old. <laughs> now, remind me as you bamf away uh, to the other side. Um, had you been in the solarium in this plane? No. Okay. I thought so. He just, they basically, he knows it's. I don't think we were. Is that the place that had the library with books in it that i no. talked to uh that was upstairs yeah yeah that okay. was the the room with like the not the fountain it's like got a, this room it, here with the fountain thing yeah it's got a yeah. pedestal um, basically believe... it, it's a former altar and a former worship yeah. room that was transformed we were in it, it was in this plane that we were in it because i got the stankai from 
uh, Varendel when I picked the lock. But okay. I wasn't with you. Yeah, I, I don't think you you were. Okay. No. Uh, so basically, it's he's doing it from the location that it was in the other one. But no, he hasn't been here himself. Okay. Uh, in that case, two things happen. Uh, one, Yay. there is a very strange sense of dislocation. As you feel like when you step through this particular door, it is, it is harder than normal. It is almost as though you have, uh, have to kind of step twice as you carry not only yourself, but your ethereal being through the door. On the other side, you find yourself having to pick, and you pick instantly, and you pick, inst uh, pick uh, instinctively, because you want to be a corporeal being. Uh, but yes. you feel in a, for a moment that you left part of your ethereal safe self behind. And you notice when you arrive that at least for the moment, you do not have a shadow. Great. Um, when you arrive in this well, room, this okay. room is still Sorry. closed up. Sorry, do you have something you want to say? Or? No. Okay. Uh, the room is still closed up. Uh, no one had been in here. Uh, it was not officially part of the party. And you see several boxes that have been delivered and put off to the side. The room's um, elements are not the same as they were in the other dimension. Uh, it appears that yeah. if that vase is here, it's either still in a box or may not actually be here. We found that in this dimension. Yeah. Because Verendel said that, because it was when Verendel was, it, it was in this dimension because yeah. okay. me and Verendel had a conversation about coming back to get the yeah. vase. It, it wasn't in the other dimension. It was oh, okay. in this Pardon one me, that they found it. Uh, yeah. It's been a while. Uh, I apologize. So, yes, you do see the vase then. It it's all good. The, the only reason I remember it is that we had conversations between me and Varendale. <laughs> right. The thing is, I was the other half of that conversation. I should probably remember. Uh, to Solarium. Okay. So, in that case, yes, you see the open boxes where this has been uncrated. And you can see while the top of the crate has been put back, it hasn't been nailed in. So, it's easy to see. Yeah. Okay, he'll as quickly oh, as he can I should grab say. it and it, uh, open it and uh, check if the vase is still there. If it is, uh, it goes in the bag of holding. One more thing. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. the Yoink. mannequin and the armor do come with you. Yay. Uh, um, it's a bit awkward, but they do come with you. Okay, after he puts the vase in, he'll take his time and take the armor off of the mannequin to put it in the uh, bag of holding. Uh, about this time, um, Medric and Annie, you see the Baron charge out uh, with the crow or with the raven ahead uh, out of his office, and the Baron bellows for the guard captain. I'll follow him. Startling. Uh, What's going some on? Of the people. Can we help? Intruders, nothing for you to worry about. Those thieves I was worried about are clearly here. Gordon. Search the place. And Gordon just sort of nods and starts to go off and get a collection of the guards from outside. I'll let you know if I see anything suspicious. I'll not shout, but like, say it out of the hallway. And the Baron turns to you and there's that flash of anger that dissipates to a fairly well-trained, uh, uh, calm and regal face. Not entirely unlike the same way that Akinrata changed himself turns around, thank you. I'm sorry for you to be bothered by this. There are still, apparently, elements that we have to stamp out in the area. I know where these thieves are frustrating, so that's understandable. And he also Best spots, uh, he also uh, spots Verendel, who's kind of poked his head out uh, to see what's going on. Verendel, I need to speak with you. And kind of gestures and uh, towards his office, calling Verendel in, who as he walks by uh, kind of looks towards uh, Medric and Annie with that, did you guys do this? <laughs> sort of look on his face. No. <laughs> um, and there's also that, there's also an, the unspoken, we're going to talk about this later, which is not entirely <laughs> unlike the look that Melora was giving you. Yeah, the That's next awesome. episode is going to be awkward, I can tell. Or maybe later on this episode, who knows? Mm. Um, 
I'll whisper Silas, to Annie. You can hear I the shouts. Silas. I'm not going to move all of these things. Sorry. Uh, go ahead. Probably. And speak. Um, uh, yeah. After he's got the stuff packed away, uh, Silas will write them and says, uh, yeah, he almost caught me down there. Uh, I get out with the vase. I've got the other vase. Uh, but my... I'm kind of out of ways to get out of this room. By this point, by the time you've been able to disconnect the armor from the the uh, mannequin, uh, there are at least a half a dozen soldiers who are visible in the hall. They are starting to go room by room. And you hear the uh, rattling of the door to the um, to the observatory or to the uh, uh, solarium. Uh, and you can hear someone outside rattling some the, keys. Do any of these windows open? Uh, if you smash it hard enough, they probably. Be, they're, they're fancy windows. They are. I would really um, rather not. Stained glass with uh, not a particular pattern on at least none you can recognize. Mostly it's uh, sort of greenish and bluish. Um, you can take some time to try to figure it out. There's there's no obvious mechanisms. Uh, yeah, I mean, if he if he goes over by a window and there's not an obvious way to open it, then it probably doesn't open. Uh, make a quick perception uh -huh. check. Uh, I hit a button, but it did not happen. There we go. 21. There 21. Go. Um, yes, you do notice, in fact, there, the, lower, uh, uh, the, the lower part of the window does open. It's a vent window about uh, one and a half feet by two feet wide. And it seems like they all have one. Yeah... Silas can't fit through that with his shield and everything else that he's got. Um, Just throw the shield down first, and then your body. Medrick and Andy, you've heard the plea from the sh Silas. He's the running shield out of places won't fit to go. A two can... foot uh, slot. You Fuck. can also uh, he see the guards now, who are starting to fan out. It's disrupting the guests. Uh -huh. uh, although Agnorad is doing his best to try to calm people down, um, saying it has something to do with an uninvited guest. Um. Uh, and Annie, as a response to his message of I'm out of ways out, is, well, you're going to have to find a way because there's no way for us to uh, not draw attention to the guards who are now searching the place. Okay. Uh, Silas does open one of them. Okay. Uh, and is there... You can hear a key being sl slipped into the door lock. Yep. Um, he's going to uh, do a quick um, illusion on the area around the window so that it looks like there's streaks of mud and someone may have gone out. He's nice. trying to make them think that someone's gone out, like a thief has gone out the window uh, meanwhile, he's, do the doors open, uh, do the doors open inward or outward? Inward. Okay. He's going to hide in the corner and hope to be behind one of the doors. Okay. What, what illusion spell is this? Uh, he's just using, uh, let's see. Won't bother with minor illusion. He'll use the, uh, major illusion one there. The one they can do at will. Uh, it covers like a 15 foot cube but he just needs it to cover the surface underneath the window so it looks like someone tried to scrabble up it and out okay just checking a little bit to make sure i understand um do you remember what it's called because there's no major illusion spell uh, there's minor illusion but that's a cantrip where uh silent image that's it Ah, okay. This is a perfect use of silent image. I just want to check the parameters here so I know how to work with it. Oh, is there, are there any, any, uh, is there anything like a book or anything nearby there? Uh, the room is pretty sparse, aside from the, the sort of plinth slash. Uh, how big is the lid of the crate? Uh, probably about, uh, let's say, three feet by by two. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, a little big. Um, is there anything he could throw out the window that he can see as he's heading back towards the uh, back corner? Anything he could throw at the window that he could see. Um, yeah, the only like crate that was book, open was this one. There's, uh, there's really nothing else in this room. It's, it's kind of sparse, maybe intentionally okay. so. Um, the box. Well, then he'll just go that. with that. Okay. Um, and he's readying. You have, you have stuff because you have an entire bag sorry. full of stuff. If you wanted to try use any of that. But. Yeah, but it, you got to get into that. So, um, and he doesn't want to lose that. Uh, no, he'll he's going to ready a uh, minor illusion just for a quick shout out the window uh, as they come in, like a ah. Okay. Uh... All right. Uh... Just want to make sure that I have the rolls that I need to make, if any. Okay, quick sound. Yep, yeah, that looks good. Okay. Um, the door opens inward. It happens to be the right-hand door, which swings in uh, towards the south, if you will, of the building. Dang it. And you see a, a guard uh, step in and look over and kind of look around. Um, are you hiding in the corner at all, or...? or... It is dark. He's so trying no to conceal himself. Yeah. Okay. Make make a, a hide air, a stealth check, but um, I will say that it's it's uh, it's dark, so it still might work. Why is it not going when I press it the first time? There we uh, go. It just uh -oh. takes a little while. Oh yeah. Yep. Seven. So the I'm assuming went that, that way. The window you chose would be one that would basically be across the way, so it's directly in view of where the person yeah, coming in would see basically. it. Basically. Uh, and the. You have a well, feeling... As they open the door, he's making that shouting sound out, just outside the window. Okay. All right. I'm going to have the guard uh, potentially be fooled by that. Let's see if I have my uh, average guard here. And so he's going you want to... me to make a performance check? Um, sure. I could make an, an opposed role of performance versus his perception. Uh, Dang his, it. Uh, hmm. Oh, shoot. I keep forgetting. The... No, never mind. That wouldn't Let's work. Let's see. Well, let's see. It's gonna be, well, it's gonna be the perception. 11. That's their one thing. Uh, let's see what happens. Oh. <laughs> so just as the guard is about to turn his head and kind of scan the room, he's kind of seen the thing, but he's also instinctively going to scan the room. And that noise yep. comes from outside, and the guard uh, uh, runs over to the far uh, door and starts looking out, or far window rather, and starts looking out through the open window. Um. Not seeing anything, but kind of craning and looking oh. around. So you might have for a yeah. moment fooled him. Silas will edge down and just take a quick peek to see if he sees anyone down around here. Like, did the guard have anyone else with him that's coming in? Um, you don't see another guard uh, there. You see another guard standing by this door. Uh, and another guard kind of up that way, uh, up further. Um, Dudek is kind of standing, looking and wondering what's going around in that direction, but that's about all you see. Dudek. Who's Dudek again? Dudek My is the, is the uh, dwarf. Science guy. Uh, science guy, yeah. He's the one who invited okay. you into his home. He's part of uh, an, an older library who are looking to preserve yeah, knowledge. Yeah, yeah. He's the one that signed my book. He is. Um, Okay. Uh, well, well, so, he, so with the order of Argenti Sagax or something? I don't know. Yeah, how I managed that's, to remember that's that. Good call. Yep. Uh, Silas is going to peek out and make another. Let's see, that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. You're pretty sure 30. the guard's not going to be fooled for very long. No, he's he's trying to do this. Actually, he's just going to he's just going to hoof it and try to sneak out. Hopefully, the guard is looking the wrong way. Okay, there are no side doors. The, uh, there only is the main door on that side. Right in the center underneath the word foyer. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the one he's heading for. Okay. Um, so he'll try to get to there. Uh, you can see that there are, again, I don't have them on the particular map here. I will put uh, uh, the guard captain, who's basically taken up stance in the middle of the room. Um, the crow would have actually moved away by now. Uh, and there are a, n a number of guards, so 
most of them seem to be spread out. Guard captain standing in the middle of the room. Uh, let's see. Um, you can hear the guard in the uh, in the solarium starting to come back with a bit of speed because he thinks he's found something. Okay. Well, in that case, Silas will stop, like slow right down, uh, and just walk out wearing his servant's disguise and kind of park himself there. Okay. Uh, the guard comes out, and as soon as he steps out through the door, he says, I think I found him. And the guard captain walks over right by you. So what was that uh, illusion DC again? Uh, 15 if they're investigating. Normally they don't get a roll unless there's a reason to check it. But if their passive perception is higher or passive investigation is higher. Pa yeah, passive uh, investigation I think probably would work. Let's see what his is. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily that high, but... Uh, oh, it is high. Oh, that's why he's paid for this. Okay, what was your uh, DC? 15. Okay, uh, he does take a closer look at you. As his passive perception is actually 15. Or passive investigation is 15. Okay, uh, well, I am going to put on a performance. All right, we'll make uh, it a contested... Uh, I will yeah. say you get advantage because you do have the illusion. Um, so it'll be his okay. his uh, perception versus uh, your the shitty performance. Oof, okay, don't um, actually know if he can fail that. It's like, how do I put on a shitty performance? Hello, governor. <laughs> I'm just a normal person here. Yeah. All right. I well, unfortunately. I'm supposed to work for the kitchen. He is really, really good at that one particular thing. Um, and so he looks at you. And you can see in that stare that he's looking right through the illusion. Yep. And reaches to grab you. Okay. Run I'll away. Hold his sheet out. The yep. I have one last trick that hopefully will work. Uh, actually, uh, Annie and Medrick, you can see the the probably the same servant vision that uh, that Silas has used all this entire time. For the most part, it's been the same one. Uh, and you can see the guard captain walking in that direction and about to reach out. You can try to do something if you want. There's not much that we can do without getting in trouble mm -hmm. as well. It's true. I, I could, That's like, fine. start a small fire, but uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that would get me through it. And probably nope. blacklisted and thrown in jail. It's all good. No. Uh, <laughs> Because uh, you have the phases, and you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yes. This is why we were going to come back for it, but. <laughs> Silas is going uh, is readying to use uh, command out of his staff. Okay. Uh, how does the staff disappear into the illusion? <laughs> staff and shield, both have to be there physically. I, well. The things I don't know if they normally do because it re it says that it replaced like it can change your clothes and stuff but it doesn't really comment about other things like that uh yeah. i'm going to assume that maybe the staff has become um you know those lantern lighting rods sure. uh that like for lanterns high up they would have like a long rod that you could light a flame a on the end and hold it up to the the chandelier or whatnot okay yeah i mean uh, a, a lamp be a broom right? or or a mop or something uh, and the shield it could just be something that's clo you're close in it just means if well, everybody actually, hands you uh, something yeah if the shield side. has to be there it will be his serving tray that's what he was using earlier <laughs> okay all right uh so he's going to reach out to grab you what are you, are you going to try to intervene before he does uh yeah i'm going to cast command and tell him that uh, he should flee. Okay. And What's we'll the save that, on uh, that? It works. Uh, come in. It's probably a wisdom save. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's a wisdom save, actually. 
Um, you, you, you probably notice, because he's this close, the slight taper of his ears. Um, somewhere distant at Elven Heritage. Yep. Um, and is it, uh, is it uh, uh, Wisdom? Still trying to get to it. There's so many C-O-M and C-O-N spells. <laughs> Come right. in. There we go. So Wisdom save has okay. no effect if the target is undead. Well, congratulations, um, he's not undead. Also, half elf doesn't matter. It's not a charm. Um, he has elven heritage, and he has advantage against being charmed. Uh, yeah, it might but be it's not a charm. charm. Um, command is a charm. Nope. Command is just a uh, straight up make you do something spell. There's nothing in the description that says it's a charm. Isn't that interesting? Most of those do yep. follow along the charm thing. That's interesting. Okay. Oh, no, well, because it's usually you're befriending someone. Right. Uh, in this case, you're not. You're just forcing their minds to do something. Not me okay. He's not getting manipulated. He's getting told. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't remember if there's any other features and traits. I'm going to assume there's not. And if there is, then he just learned it after this. Uh, this is a wisdom save. What's my target? Just to make 15. It oh, that's tough. Okay. I think because that's it's the no. same as mine. He fails. So as he reaches out towards you, you utter this command, flee. And his eyes go wide and he runs. Uh, and he runs quite... Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, he's pretty fast. What is he, anyway? <laughs> I keep forgetting what I built him as. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. So, in fact, he runs very, very fast uh, and goes right through the front doors, opens them, uh, and then runs out into the courtyard. Convenient. The door's open. Okay. Uh, yes, leaving the door behind him because he's not going to pay any attention to that. And he runs straight out, which, uh, well, you know, okay. causes a few raised um, eyebrows and definitely seems strange to Medric and Annie. You see the guard coming out now, uh, yelling out, in here, I think I found him in here. He's uh, approximately, well, he's right in that junction. And you sort of yeah. saw the captain run away from him uh, for some reason. Silas, trying to maintain the performance, will say, I'm with you, sir, and will run out as well. <laughs> uh, these side roofs. Yes. Is that, like, is it free to walk under those, or are those, like, yeah, Little those are those rooms. are basically debarking areas, so that's where they can bring a wagon up and have some cover while they while they while they disembark. Okay, so could I run like through over to this side? Uh, it counts as difficult terrain when you're moving through it, but yes, you can. Sure, I will flee as fast as my legs can move, and while he's not looking at me, I'm going to become a. I'm going to become yellow lace. Okay. And slow down and uh, look like, what's going on? Blah, blah, blah. I'm a scared rich person. <laughs> okay. Who's, uh, for some reason, making for the side corner. You do hear as you get over that space, um, because this is happening, basically all that's movement and then the spell and your round. Uh, he only is commanded for a, a, a single round. Uh, yeah, yeah. You do hear him yell out from behind, uh, behind you, guards. And call for more of them. Uh, however, um, I'll say you can go ahead and make a another stealth roll with advantage to try to just sort of saunter away <laughs> and see if you actually can succeed. Can I make it a performance roll? My stealth sucks. <laughs> uh, sure, sure. You're pretending to be someone else. You're not kind of hiding it. 26, on, finally. There you go. Yeah, um, miracle of miracles, uh, you manage to saunter away, uh, and no one seems to pay you much mind, but you do see there is a hornet's nest behind you, uh, as several more guards, yeah. perhaps as many as 20 guards now, are combing the grounds. Uh, but they don't seem to pay much attention to you, as you kind of wander off, off uh, to the side, and where are you Where are you going? To the deep woods uh, off to the side, or down the road? or he'll yeah, well, no, he'll go to the woods, and once he's in behind a tree, uh, he'll change again to just 
I guess look like one of the guards uh, until he can get far enough into the woods that they can't actually see him from the house. Okay. Easily enough done. Uh, you're out of the immediate danger and have managed to make your way out. Uh, it is quite dark at night. Uh, the ground is quite wet. It was raining earlier quite heavily. Oh, yeah. Um, distant storm. I've been away from, from the Raven's Cape much better than I did. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we haven't found out. He might go slipping down a cliff in a minute. Um, where are you intending to go? You do know that the sides of the cape are really steep. It is essentially a, yeah. a, a straight up and down Took climb. Took me a full week to, to recover from falling down. It. Yeah. Yep. Um, the woods do parallel the road all the way down, but that is a very long walk. If you want to go back to the uh, to the village, not to uh, Ilfvater, but to the marsh village, um, you can make your way from there, but it's also a very long walk. Yeah, well, he's used to long walks. Uh, he will stop to write them a message saying, uh, I get out. I have both the vases. Sorry about the commotion. Um, I'll head to the village. Uh, we can meet up in the morning wherever you want to. Uh, I assume the three sisters. And we this... saw. Sorry, we couldn't help more without us getting in trouble. As you receive and send the response, I receive the message and send the response. Uh, yes. Uh, basically, at this point, uh, the party is over. The guests are being rounded up so they can all be in one space at the same time. The Baron and Baroness are both apologizing, mostly the Baroness. Um, the Baron seems to be a little more intent on trying to find someone. Um, and the guard captain make sure to grasp everyone by the shoulder before they leave checking for illusions now that he's aware of it uh, and actually him and the baron are both doing that um, it's a little bit intrusive but they also are insisting uh, and while there's a little bit of pushback from uh, from in fact yellow lace um, who seems to be quite bewildered as to what's going on doesn't understand any of this Seems to be completely unaware of anything. Uh, and a little bit of pushback from... Uh, from... Um, shoot, what's her name? Uh, I don't even have her on the map right now. She's off in a room that no one can see. Uh, Odega actually protests a little bit. Um, but you also notice that Odega was talking to the Baroness one-on-one -on -one for a while. Uh, and then they seem to be speaking on weirdly even terms. But after all that happens, they uh, wish everyone a safe travel home. Uh, thank them for coming to the party. Thank them for celebrating the recovery of the Baroness, which is what the party was initially for. Uh, and, uh, and look forward to future, uh, future engagements. Um, although no parting gift. Maybe there was one. Maybe they decided to skip it. Actually, for you, Annie, you would know that a lot of these do actually end up with parting gifts. There's usually a little something that's given to the guests, and maybe that was curtailed because of all the commotion. And um, just to clarify a couple of things in that, um, I wouldn't leave until Varendel does, so I would ask to stay until... Okay. Uh, his meeting with Baron is done because he is my ride home. By by now the meeting is over, but you can see that look on the on Verandel as in, uh, you know, it's a very uncomfortable look as in, I've just been reamed over the coals kind of kind of feeling, um, because the Baron is his boss and this was his responsibility to make sure that no one, or that these people were taken care of essentially, um, but he doesn't say as much. There's just a little bit of we'll talk later. Um, okay. Um, and there was a second thing, but my brain forgot. Um, I want to track how, um, Oscar is reacting to this as well. How, sorry, which person? <laughs> my cousin. Oh, right. Oscar. How he's reacting was, to, to this. Oliver. Oliver, yes. Threw me for a moment there. Um, I knew it was Oscar or Oliver. I knew it was one of the two. 
Uh, curiously enough, uh, his date will be leaving. Uh, 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 the one wearing seashells is going to be leaving. But uh, Oliver is staying. Oliver is going to stay with the Baron and Baroness. Um, he's got to make a, an insight check as you kind of... Uh, actually, make it with advantage because you know this kind of, uh, this kind of person... It's sort of the royal family. What would they be expected to do, even though he's a distant member oh, of no. the family? <laughs> yeah. Um, he looks slightly amused at all of this this kerfuffle. Um, but there's something else you're not quite figuring out. But he is not going to be leaving. And yeah, and then I, I will leave without any any situation. Um, uh, Yellow lace, I believe, was with uh, with Ardwin. Yeah. Actually, um, can wh which was it the guard captain or um, the Baron who? checks my shoulder uh they both do they both do uh, as in they the guard captain does not trust his own instincts alone uh then uh well when uh the baron checks my shoulder i wink at him and i leave okay <laughs> okay what was the what's the intended effect of the of the wink is there meant to be a particular thing com com conveyed well it's more to bother him Okay. Um, I've already put the seed of I know what something's going on between him and his brother, and he's already on edge. It's kind of to make him make a mistake in the long run. Okay. Uh, that would be uh, potentially an intimidation role, if that's the route you want to go, to see what sort of lasting effect there is. Okay. Uh, make it with advantage because he's already on edge. Uh... Okay. All right. He does seem to kind of react to that a little bit, and you notice, you can feel his eyes, even though if you turn away, you know how that sort of weird feeling is. And you know someone's watching you as you go out. And in fact, he seems a little distracted from the rest of the people that they're checking on the way out. I think the Baron would probably have tried to, to cover this a little bit as a sort of almost a thank you, pat on the shoulder, shake the hand mm -hmm. kind of thing. But to you especially, it's very obvious that the guard captain isn't doing that. And this is just a second check of the same kind. Um, yep. But you and Verandel uh, uh, are escorted outside. You find your coach uh, ready and prepped. Um, there's almost this, you get a sense that uh, while nothing is shouted out, uh, there are servants at the door, especially the, the, uh, the younger um, uh, attendants for the wagons who are checking who's coming out and making sure that wagon is ready and brought forward. So there's almost no delay as they're, they're kind of watching the, the procession outward. Similarly, for you and uh, Melora Medrick, uh, your wagon is brought forward. Uh, Melora uh, protests over her father, but he insists he's fine. Uh, and actually, um, Medrick, there's a, a look of, of pride on Ardwin's face when he insists because he looks at you because you were the one to heal him. Uh, and he kind of insists, no, no, no. Go and enjoy the rest of your evening. And he gives Medric a rather heavy wink. I'll just nod and I'll see if I can do anything else about that when we get back to town. No, I'm sure it will be fine, he says. He's sort of subconscious. He is touching the space where the sealed over skin is no longer in ear. Um, and he uh, puts on his arm uh, the woman in yellow lace. 
who seems to be quite oblivious of everything going on. Nothing like herself, or at least the self you'd seen a little while ago. The Silas self? <laughs> uh, no, Yellow Lace uh, was the one that seemed to be directing the show in the other world. Okay. Huh, right. But so if she's with Arwen, that's not good. Seems to be uh, back to the somewhat um, light-headed self that perhaps she originally was. But the evening concludes. You manage to make it back. Um, Verandel uh, apologizes to Annie. Uh, I would offer a nightcap, but I have some work to do. You're muted. It's all good. It looks like I have some some talking to to do as well. Indeed. We'll be talking soon. And he doesn't phrase it as a question. He phrases it as a certain a certain moment that will come in the future. Um, I, I like nod. <laughs> um When you arrive at the temple, Medric, with Melora in the cart, um she looks at you uncertainly. You can make an insight roll if you like. I certainly will. As soon as I can pull up my roll 20. Here we go. Very insightful. Yes, plus nine. 18. Nice. Um... That's no fart noise. That That's a decent roll. <laughs> yeah, with a plus nine, though, it's like, eh. <laughs> it's I mean, an average 18, roll. 18 is an 18. It's still good. Uh, it wasn't spectacular, but it's well enough to kind of realize that her hesitation is she's wondering if you're going to ask her in. Yeah, sure, might as well. Would you like to come in for a bit? Uh, and her face lights up. Most definitely. And we'll, we'll cast a veil over what may or may not have happened that evening. Um, after a very long night of walking, uh, Silas, you make it back to the village. There's always someone mm -hmm. awake at the village. Uh, it's not exactly an official watch, but there's always somebody who's getting up super, super early in the morning and others who are working until the very, very last light and then beyond. Probably about the same yep. time you make it back is the same time that Odiga and Athanos do. You can hear their wagon coming in towards the town. Um, Annie, you're blinking a lot. I don't know if that means your camera is is dying or what, but sorry, this is distracting me. Um, I'm not noticing anything on my end. It's yeah, it's not the whole video. It's like down where your name is, there's like a red bar that'll flicker in and out occasionally. Yeah. Okay. Um it, it might be just a loose connection or it might be hopefully not too too uh too problematic in the future. I, I was pulling out my like charging cable for my phone, so I might have hit something. Okay. Is it is it good now? Seems to be now. Yeah, I haven't it wasn't seen constant, it happen. but uh oh, Okay. Um you hear Odiga talking excitedly to Athanos, but not, but Athanos not really responding all that much. Um, and you hear Odiga kind of, I think this is going to work out very, very well. This was exactly the sort of connection I needed. I'm excited about this, Athanos. And Athanos is just, mm-hmm. Silas will walk out of the woods, say, my apologies for not being there to drive you back. Uh, there's a little bit of start, and uh, Athanos, who has the reins, uh, is just sort of looking you up and down, trying to figure out where you've been, but not really caring all that much. He looks very, very tired. He looks like he has spent 14 hours at this party. This is not his place. Whereas Odega mm -hmm. seems energized. That's all right. I'm sure we could make, out, make do without you. Uh, he'll uh, he'll scoot uh, uh, Athanos over and says, "Here, at least I can do is take you the rest of the way." 
Uh, and actually, Odega, Odega uh, uh, resists. Oh, no, no, no. That's quite fine. We're almost home. I'm sure you could use the walk. Sure. He'll keep walking beside them. Okay. Athanos just sort of shrugs and keeps the reins. Um, says, you, the... Uh, you meant uh, what connection? Well, that party, of course. There's all the people I needed to know. All the people mm. who have power in this town and those who can help me on what I need to do. Well, what, what do you need, need to, to do? do? What we need to do to further our mission, to to bring home the mother. Good. It's so refreshing to be able to make those kind of connections and to make some progress. Yes. Yes, it is. I may have found us someone who can give us quite a bit of help in that realm. Hopefully, we shall have uh, the mother back by the end of the year. Oh, Not I'm back. sure we will. Had mother here. Yeah. Sorry. I'm sure we will. And I'm sure whatever connection you managed to make, and whatever it was you were doing, I'm sure that will be helpful. It's a very condescending tone. As in, I'm sure whatever thing you think you did was probably not that important. But mm -hmm. it's nice for you to think that. That's fine. Um, I wish them a good night. And uh, I walk home to uh, my place to check on uh, my parents and on uh, Nikki and then go to sleep because it has been a long, long time. As you come home and open up the door and a little bit of moonlight crosses across the room just for an instant, it is almost as though someone is sitting in the chair in the middle of the kitchen at the table. A familiar shape, a shadow maybe, but it is almost as though Molly is standing right there. And then the moment passes, and the shadow vanishes, and the room is empty once more. Silas just looks at the spot, and soon. Soon, Molly. Then he goes to check on everyone. Everybody seems to be fine. Nikki is sleeping quite quietly. Curled up in what should not be a, a really comfortable position that only children can really manage. But doesn't seem to be bothered too much. That's good. I'll just lay down next to him and go to sleep. And indeed, everyone has a restful night. The first long rest in about... At the, what, five months <laughs> for this campaign? <laughs> uh, in a while. It's been a long it's been a time, while. yes. Some of you with companionship, others with the promise of questions to be asked later. Um, as you reconvene the following day in the traditional way you've done numerous times before at the Three Bells, um, gather around your traditional table, Life feels weird. After all that you went through at that party, after the strange extra-dimensional feeling, after the, the discoveries and the conflicts and the transformations that only a few of you, you remember, the normal world feels a little bit abnormal. Like it doesn't quite fit like it used to. Even though you have Sandy's smiling face as she delivers to your table, steaming piles of wonderful fresh cooked food bread just out of the oven uh, porridge that's uh, that's fresh as can be something feels a little off but nonetheless you reconvene in your traditional table it's now become your table effectively in that in the inn you're there all the time Annie was the only one who actually lives there but everybody kind of leaves it aside in fact, when you see, uh, when Annie, when you come down and you see somebody sitting at that table, Sandy has shooed them away when she spots you coming down. 
As I'm like half turning to another table. <laughs> um, but uh, Medric probably the first one to the table for the meeting. Yeah, probably. Silas at some point, a little bit later on, perhaps in the morning, after breakfast has been completed, but before it's been all cleared away. He'll come in and ask for their finest pot of coffee. Will do. Uh, then he goes and slumps in a chair and face firsts into the table. <laughs> you hear a surly, so you're childish up to no voice. last night, Silas. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's just the general exhaustion of the past, however long it was in there. Did I get a long rest? Oh, yes. Okay. You may have had a more comfortable long rest than some others, but she didn't wear you out, if that's what you're implying. If you get a chance to be a ghost, don't. There's yeah, a... that sounded uncomfortable. It was really useful sometimes, but... Yeah, really lonely. <sighs> so uh, I take it you grab the second phase. Yeah. Um. Okay, he would. Um. He would have taken out. No, I should leave it. Uh, he'll basically bring out the the bag of holding, and he'll pull out uh, the book that he got from the Baroness's room. We shouldn't pull this out in the middle of a public space. Yeah. Well, I've heard the book might not be a bad thing, but he said like the other stuff is is inside. He just hands the bag to uh, Annie. I'll take that back. <laughs> um. It is relatively so, yeah, quiet. In I don't know if those vases are going to put a target on us. I don't know how they interact with you-know-who. Uh, I wonder if, uh, what was her name? Regalista. Is she still in town? You haven't seen her in a little while, but you, you've you heard of her being around. Um, she's taken on a, uh, a sea elf form, I believe, at last you've seen her. Which is unusual, she but could, not unheard of. She might know more about these. Yeah. Um, what are we going to do about Catherine? Uh, he'll say her name fairly low. We should probably go after her. Yep. Does anyone have any idea... How to get to her? No. Nope. Well, I suppose the temple, the temple where, where we first encountered her, would be a good place to start. Maybe there's some info there. Yeah. Um. I mean, I just learned an ability to teleport between spots, but I can't go where she is with this. There's probably a a bigger spell that does it, but find it. Um, Would uh, Dudek be able to help? He knows about gates. Possibly. Although I... Are they leaving today? Although, he can, we can chat with through the book anyways, so I suppose mm -hmm. that's fine. Um, yeah, I mean, we can check with him. I do have, I did borrow some books on portals and dimensions and such from him. I can try looking through that, but I mean, any magic that's going to get more about the vases too. Power. Yeah. And if he doesn't know anything about them, then we can fill him in on what we know so far. And what would... What was the Baron doing with two of them? I don't know. That kind of troubles me. It probably has something to do with how the, the Baroness became healthy again. 
Well, I think she became healthy because of CW. CW? So they don't go, Crypt Wallow. Oh, right, right. Because I was also thinking Clockwinder, and it's like, what? (laughs) Yeah. Okay. We're going to have to start giving code names to these people. (laughs) Um, Yellow Lace. It's fine. It works. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yellow yellow Lace, you know who? Bozzy McVaz face. (laughs) Yeah. Um... Huh. Uh, and then there's the whole gold of it all. Yeah, so gold is the diamond. Yeah. Uh, I'll whisper oh, really wait. low. I don't know if, actually, I don't know if uh, Silas actually heard that much. Um, okay. That's, I mean, well, that explains why Gold wouldn't talk to us about it before. And the thing is, is that there's something to do with having been left for dead and wanting revenge. And that that's all that matters. Yeah. Um, that reminds me, something uh, you might know more about, Annie. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was in the pirate office, I saw a, I looked at a map. It was a map of a, a sea voyage from 40 years ago, an Admiral Montrose. Uh, and it looks like Montrose took a side trip. Uh, the map the Baron had had interception routes plotted on it. And the Baron, or it should be just Baron Harquin, uh, Baron Harquin had the nameplates from several ships, uh, the piece of wood at the front with the name on it. And he had the one for Montrose's ship, the... Well, he's got it written down, so he gives you the actual name, but Pat can't remember it exactly. Is the Coriopsis, maybe? You did yeah. remember it exactly. Um, um, now, this is player trying to remember backstory stuff that was not created by me. Um, that would have been my father, correct? Uh before your father was never an admiral no okay uh however i remembered something about like him being on the seas before him he actually married my mother right so um how old is annie uh she just turned 19 19 i'll have annie make a history check with advantage Huh. Okay. That's, that's weird. That's a that's a dirty twenty. Okay. Oh, okay. It's showing up as a ten on on my other screen, but it was like a fifteen plus five. So yeah, yeah. Ten well, is on, the lower on here for me, it's showing out, and the twenty. Oh, yeah, because I yeah. rolled with advantage. Yeah. Yeah. But for some reason, D&D Beyond was giving me only the well, results for one. Yeah, well, like for like for mine, there's no graying out. That's because you have to roll it set up to roll twice all the time. I specifically mm-hmm. put advantage. Yeah. Okay. Um, I see that must be doing because I saw it, it was doing it with Mark, too, but it yeah. wasn't doing it for me. Yeah, I always cool. roll with advantage because it's easier just to do that. Um, or roll two dice, I should say, not with advantage. I do a roll with all, all advantage. That's how I do so well. No. Um, so, uh, Annie, um, as you're kind of thinking back on this, uh, and as the Coriopsis has mentioned, um, you're starting to remember some of the lessons you got when you were younger. Um, lessons about the family tree and all of these sorts of things that were going on. 
Uh, and a couple of things come to mind. First of all, um, your father was never an admiral. His brother, Swainder, was an admiral. In fact, his older brother, who was in line to become king, was an admiral. Indeed, on board the Coriopsis. The Coriopsis um, has a symbol of a yellow flower with five petals, which is actually the, the name of the flowers, the Coriopsis. It was a beautiful ship, according to, to legend, uh, lost at sea in a tragic sailing accident, was how it was recorded in the histories. Um, and that was long before you were born. 20 years almost, or more than 20 years before you were born. Um, the other thing in there is, is the description of the official chart, which Silas did describe had the cartographer's name. Um, those are not to be outside of the Alarian Navy. Um, they're very proud of the work that they do. And while on occasion they might loan a chart to a friendly Navy, um, there's no reason the Baron should ever have had that chart. Especially because that was a trip chart. And those are supposed to be secret. They would have charted it out because they would have wanted to know from the source if they had to go looking where the, uh, where the ship ended up, making sure they knew how long it was going to take, that sort of thing. Uh, it was a trip chart probably produced by the cartographer themselves. Um, as part of the normal voyage. What the side mission is, you don't know. Um, you don't know anything about that because it was never included in the histories. But no one outside of the Alarian Navy should have had that chart. And somebody had not only had that chart, but was able to plot an intercept course, um, which is why they're usually kept secret. And from what the description of this was, too, it's an unusual thing for the lead ship to go off on its own. It would have normally stayed with the fleet. For whatever reason, it was gone on its own. That made it much more vulnerable, which means it was even more a target. But officially, Admiral Swainder Montrose was tragically lost at sea. Many years later, your father became king. Since you rolled a 20, do you have a question? You can think about Brain it. Brain is we can, we can just back processing everything. If you want to just make a note that, you know, I have a question coming to me, we can always revisit that at another time. So I have like one question on this? Did you want to continue with your description, Silas? Um, well, he said, basically, he just he presents that to her and asks, "Was that was Admiral Montrose a relative of yours, my like grandfather, uncle, actually?" Oh, huh. my father's older brother. Did he survive the taking of the Coriopsis? No. Those charts shouldn't have been in anyone's hands. And just the charts clear. that you describe, there should be one ever made, and it should not leave the hands of one person. There are two. Pe there are three people involved in those charts: the person who will be following the chart, the person who makes the chart, and the person who keeps the chart. And it should not leave those hands. And there is only one made, for security reasons, to avoid what happened. And to be clear, um, it was not known what happened. They were lost at sea. 
It was not. It was not ever declared to be yeah. taken or or yeah. anything like that. Nothing uh, was ever recovered. Do you know why he was taking a side trip? It, that would be unusual because if it was the lead ship in in a fleet, it would be unusual for the lead to go on off on its own. Well, yeah, and you don't want to. I mean, he's a member of the royal family. You don't want him going off by himself in case this happens. It sounds like someone maybe worked with the Baron to kill your uncle. Or maybe they were after whatever your uncle was looking for. I have my question. Okay. Does the information that we just figured out have anything to do with the papers that Gaetano gave me? Uh, remind me of the papers that Gaetano gave you. Um, it, it was his studies and... It was his. It, it was notes that he said would be useful for me. Let me just give give me a moment. I will find it. I think um, it was mentioned that it was there. Like there were studies from his travels. I mean, maybe he was looking something. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I just need to open my thing. I'm not ignoring you. I'm making notes of my own here. All I have in my notes was Gaetano's notes. Not consumed during use. It was during the downtime that I fell off Cape Raven. Give me a second. I'll see. Yeah, I think you didn't get back to it. Um, the surprises. Do you have a, a date associated with that note by any chance? No, I'm looking for it. Okay. Uh, the answer is most likely yes. We'll just have to confirm exactly what point is the danger for me seeding things that probably were three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, or at least two years ago. I'll, I'll keep looking. Okay. And if you do find a specific thing in there, basically at this point, I'll say that you think of Gaetano's notes and you're starting to run through them in your head, but you're going to have to go back and actually study them to figure out now that you have a new sort of angle to look for, um, this question of what the Admiral was looking for and what Gaetano was looking for and if they happen to be the same thing or if there's something else. So, okay. Um, and I will make some notes to make some notes. It's all good. I will, um, if you guys continue, I will find the notes on the notes. Okay. Um, so, uh, Annie looks lost in thought at the questions, Silas, um, but you still have more to report. I think both sides still have a bit more to report potentially. And actually, at this particular um, point, um, through the front door, in a, 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 a pretty stunning, if a little conservative, outfit, um, looking refreshed, renewed, and uh, maybe bold, depending on what happened. And that's entirely up to, to Nax. Uh, Melora comes to the door, uh, looks around, satisfied to find Medrick and the rest of you, and strides over to your table and sits down. So... I'm on mute. Okay, Melora, I'll, I'll greet her and just... I'm just going to assume she's going to make her way over. She doesn't wait for the greeting, but she appreciates it and acknowledges it. Um, do you make a motion of affection, or are you standoffish this morning? I'm not standoffish. Okay. Um, she'll I'll just say, like, now. I hope you rested well. She'll lean in then and kind of give a quick uh, peck on the cheek. 
of affection and sits down. So, one heck of a party, huh? Yeah, uh, I can't believe things didn't go worse. It seems like danger and drama follows us. Indeed, it's rather exciting, if somewhat painful. My father sends his regards. He's already working on a kind of hat to wear with a little bit of a, of a handkerchief. I think he's going to be able to pull this off. He certainly knows that this story is going to get around and it's going to increase his reputation, so I guess there's that. So what did his ear just disappear? Well, and she looks squarely at all three of you, kind of each in turn. I was hoping you could explain that. My memories of the evening are muddled. For example... I distinctly remember actually being a tree. I remember that too. It's like everything was transported to a different dimension. I'm not sure how to explain it, but it, it felt like we were also in a dream. I remember seeing you as a tree and somehow managed to get through to you. I could see you. It was through a haze. I couldn't really remember anything, but I knew you were good and important to me. But nobody else seems to have acknowledged that anything happened. Even my father, who is obviously missing an ear, somehow thinks that nothing really happened. There are leaps of logic there that I can't follow. Not sure how to follow it either. Uh, it, it seems like anybody who was not gotten through to felt like nothing had happened. And Melora turns towards Silas. Was it you were doing? Did you do all that? I've heard some interesting stories about you and your people, but this is not what I expected. No. No, I had nothing to do with that. That was um, your father's date, I believe. Yeah, there were powerful forces at play that we haven't encountered before. I'm afraid I wasn't there to see what happened with your father. I assume he'll be okay. He seems adaptable. Um... Yes, something weird did happen last night. What you're remembering as a dream did happen. I think because Silas got through to you, you're able to remember some of it. Uh, most of the rest of the people there don't remember anything. Are you trying to tell me that Sarah had something to do with this? Sarah is Sarah, very nice. The lady in the yellow girl. lace? Yes, I believe she was wearing yellow lace. A silly getup that my father insisted on buying for her. But she's... She has skills, I understand, but none of them would be something like this. None of them are in public. D did Silas... Was Silas the only one that clued in that the yellow lace lady was a hag, or was that all of us? I think you'd each seen Yellow Lace speaking to the Baroness in that sp in the transformed ballroom. Right, she was uh, the migraine speaker. Mm -hmm. Yes, remember okay. she spoke in in uh, in true abyssal. It caused pain in the, in the heads of mortals. It is most likely that yeah, you said you said her name was Sarah. Sarah Finch. She's a waitress. At least okay. that's her official job. Most of the time, she finds really expensive people to hang around with. Sarah is either... Either her body was being used and used by the entity that caused this, or she is the entity that caused this. Possessed she was and speaking used? In some... yeah. That should go on her card. If she is the entity that caused this she is very powerful and very dangerous and you should not mess with her 
she went home with my father last night. And she kind of oh, looks yeah, very I mean, concerned. In uh, the dreamland, whenever she spoke, it caused a splitting headache. I had to leave, otherwise I was going to die. I mean, she can be really, really dumb, and I would describe it as a splitting headache every time I've heard her try to say something intelligent. <laughs> it's because the being that was there is linked to the abyss in some way. Do you she mean spoke the actual through abyss? abyssal. I only know a dialect that mortals can speak. Do you, are you talking about the actual abyss and not some slander that I would probably want to say? I am talking about the void beyond that which no mortal can survive in. I mean, I could still think of some rather colorful phrases using that same meaning, but I I think you're talking Silas more will, about... Silas will grab her hand and squeeze it ungently and say, you must not mess around with her. She could destroy you, your father, this town. Okay, she is okay. a being of power and not one of the good ones. If I'm she's not... putting on an act, take the act at face value. Okay, I'm not going to mess around with her, but now you're starting to make me really worried. Who is she then if she's not that waitress? Did I don't she give you a name. I'll ask Silas. That is something that it is best that you do not know. If that name is on your mind, she may notice, and you don't want her to notice you. Again, this Sarah may be just a vessel she was using. I don't know. But she is far stronger than we are and far subtler. She's far stronger for now. And and by the way, I, as I was praying to Ignis this morning, I realize that there is a way I can restore your father's ear, but I've, my, my connection to Ignis is not strong enough yet. Eventually, though. Well, that would be appreciated, although he's going to milk it in the meantime for everything it's worth. Still, what you said about Sarah is rather disturbing. I, I, I tell can't... you this only in an effort to convince you not to get involved. How can I not get involved? If she's involved with my father, then I'm already not involved. involved. Yeah, I'm assuming he means not involved directly. If there's anything you observe that she's doing or anything suspicious, let us know. If there's anything suspicious, I'm not going to stand by and let it happen. Not let it happen, but... Look, Ugh. my father can be an arrogant prick. He's the only relative I have left. He's smart, he's ruthless, and sometimes a little bit uh, susceptible, let's say. But if he's in danger, I'm not going to stand by and let that blonde bitch do something to him. That's understandable. What can you do but if you challenge her yourself, I mean, I wouldn't challenge her myself. Well, then, if you challenge her yourself, she's going to kill you. Well, then I'm going to take my father away from this. That could That's be... That's a wise idea, but it will idea. require a lot of tact to do properly. <laughs> and I'll look at Silas. <laughs> it's like, you're, you're the tactful one here, and possibly you, Annie. I don't think there's much that can convince your father to leave his base of power. She is possibly attempting to manipulate him if she does, let us know. If you try to confront her, then you will be gone and he will have nobody to defend him. But there must be some sort of test or, or sign or something like that? Not that I know of. 
you, you mentioned she was hanging around with a lot of rich and powerful people. Well, yeah, she likes to be the arm candy. Gets her to all the greatest parties. Gets her paid. Do you have a list of these people by any chance? I don't keep a list of them. I don't even want to think about them. After all, she's with my father. And if I start thinking about the fact that she's also been with all those other people, then it's going to be a lot more uncomfortable for me to be around my father. But if we knew at least some of the people she hangs around with, maybe we could, I don't know, figure out some kind of pattern what she's trying to accomplish. I guess I could ask around. Whatever you do, try to be subtle. Yes, as subtle as possible. Hmm. So, now that you've completely and utterly terrified me for the morning, where the hell is that waiter? And what else happened last night? What was really going on? We're still trying to figure that out. <laughs> I'll look to Annie and Silas as in, like, do you guys have any more information? <laughs> Not particularly. We, we don't have much. And what we I have do have... I bits and pieces that I'm trying to put together. Yeah. The fewer people involved, the better. Yeah. Well, consider me involved. There's no way you're getting rid of me now. No. We're you're... not trying to. We just don't want to put you in danger. You need to keep an eye on your father and make sure that he is safe. Look, there's not a lot of lessons that I learned from my father and actually care to repeat, but knowledge is power is one of them. The less I know, the more dangerous everything is for me. This part has nothing to do with your father. If this... If Sarah was at the center of everything that happened last night, it certainly does. What could your father tell you about her, or did he tell you anything about her? I didn't ask. He was... As far as I was concerned, she was nothing more than another, another jewel he kept on his on his uh, fingers. I don't know much about her. She she works at a couple of different places. Never seems to be working for very long, and has all kinds of wealthy friends. I guess you might say. Her and my father have been at a few different places here and there. Seems to be a little bit more. Uh, I don't even want to think about it, but it seems to be a little more serious. A little more steady, I guess. Seemed to be That's happy, so I didn't ask too much about it. But you, you gotta let me know what happened. I'm dying to know what happened. You said if I don't have her name on my mind, then I'm not necessarily going to be able to give it to her. But you know what? I'm going to be thinking about that party for a week or month or probably the whole year. Same. I mean, was a a tree, we're still though. trying to figure out what happened ourselves. When did I become a tree? How did I become a tree? What was the I one think, becoming uh, a tree? From what we saw, most of the people turned into whatever their masks were. Like, your, your mask was tree-shaped. You turned into a tree. Verendel had a unicorn mask. He turned into a unicorn. Oh, yeah. I seem to remember something like that. She turns to Annie. He looks kind of nice with a horn on his head, doesn't he? <laughs> I don't know what happened. But I would also wouldn't want you to get hurt trying to help us figure out what happened. Oh, please. Yeah, if something happens to you, your dad's going to be pissed at me. I've been taking care of myself since I was a kid. I'm the one who usually leaves all the caravans my dad sends to dangerous territory. I'll be fine. I can take care of myself. Just don't shut me out now. And she looks specifically at Medrick for that. We won't shut you out. Good. Now that we've got that established. And at that point, the front door opens. And standing in the front door, looking like he hasn't slept all that much. Uh, still, uh, not still in the same clothing he was wearing last night, but 
in a sort of hastily thrown on a captain's uniform uh, is Verendel, who walks kind of straight through the room. I was shushing my cat. And uh, and uh, and uh, stands... Annie, while while everybody else has been talking, she has actually taken out a notebook and is like noting things down, and like she she has like a red string type diagram going on, <laughs> trying to make sense because this is information that we did not have. Conspiracy theory map. <laughs> Conspiracy theory map that goes further than just out wa- of water. I uh, I kind of feel like I have an a, achievement unlocked now. Managed to mm. get character or player to create conspiracy map. Um, for the second I campaign mean, in a row. For the second for campaign the, in a row. Right. Because there's, there's <laughs> I did one for the other one too. <laughs> um, but uh, upon seeing you all at the table, um, Verendel stalks over, uh, nods to uh, Silas, Medric, Annie. Looks a little bit quizzical. Um, Melora, right? Yes. Do you mind if I sit? I have some questions. Feel free. And he sits down, and uh, immediately the same sort of effect that Silas had calls for a, 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 a flagon of coffee, essentially, and the kind of slumps a little bit, feeling a little bit there's a certain sense of he's been holding up his official stature for probably the last several hours, like the last dozen hours or so. But amongst this table, he feels somewhat more comfortable to, to, to let down his guard a little bit. And so his shoulders slumped ever, ever so slightly. doesn't quite face plant on the table, but it's, it's pretty close. And the first cup of coffee is gone almost instantly. So, uh, Heck of a party, huh? Silas, uh, as as he's drinking his coffee, Silas is going to turn to uh, Melora and say in her head, "You probably should leave. I don't think bringing the pol- uh, bringing the authorities and you together is the best idea." Uh, there's a sort of look on, on Melora's face. As she, first of all, she's kind of looking around as to where the voice is coming from. Notice she's your intent uh, on her. And when you finish, her face just sort of wrinkles up in that, uh, that eyebrow-raised, uh, fur- furrowed brow of, of determination. There's no verbal answer, but the answer is, uh-huh, I'm not leaving this table. <laughs> In fact, uh, she uh, probably say, sits back a little bit and crosses her arms. <laughs> okay, in her uh, uh, again. Do I notice that? Mind. Oh, it's pretty obvious what she does. Not yeah. necessarily noticing what Silas. Do I notice does, who she's looking at? Well, <laughs> Silas oh, looks over at her and then she has a bad reaction. Yeah, she's she's still kind of staring uh, daggers at Silas at the moment. I, I'm gonna obvious. make this thing this most. Silas, uh, <laughs> well. If you stay here, that may cause Verendel to look into your family more, and that may not be good for your father. But do what you will. And then he'll just turn back to his meal. There's a momentary hesitation. Um, and then she looks over at Verendel with a little bit of trepidation and sighs. Captain? Melora? You know my father, right? And Verendel kind of nods. Yes, I do. Good. My schedule's clear for the day. And she sits. She sits there, uh, kind of determined. Verendel looks confused. He has no idea what just happened. Uh, but that may also be that he's only getting through that first cup of coffee. So, that party. Yeah, we were just discussing that, trying to figure out what was going on. I'd particularly like to know what happened at the end. I was up half the night with all of my men that I could raise, 
And he turns to Annie. I managed to keep you off of my immediate rolls for the evening. And we were scouring the hillside. We turned up a stash of rusted weapons that had probably been there 20 years. We found a still. We left the still alone because it wasn't that bad. Found a couple of hunters who were quite surprised to be woken for the middle of the night in their camps. And nothing else. Not even sure what I was looking for. And at that, he kind of looks around the looks around the room, knowing that Annie and Medrick were in the in the house at the time. Kind of looks a little bit at Silas suspiciously, but doesn't linger there. Silas is calmly eating his meal and pretending not to be involved. <laughs> I remember. And he kind of gestures a little bit towards his head and then kind of drops the gesture. I remember being somewhat different, briefly. Before that... Horny? Uh, <laughs> how would he react to that? Uh, actually, it would be a sharp look of... Yes. Uh, actually, you look at, at Silas and then at Annie and then kind of a bit of crimson forming on the cheeks as he's... I wouldn't have put it that way. Mm, this bacon is sure good. <laughs> As I was saying, the early part of the evening is is confusing. I remember there was some sort of scuffle, but I can't remember who was involved. Every time I think of it, I only hear, only see shadows. And then I was different. And I saw more shadows. And then I remember being screamed at by the Baron about incompetence. So, does anyone have any enlightening words to share with me about what the hell just happened and what I'm what I should be worried about? And how in the there was some extra planar shit going on. Uh, I'm not the most knowledgeable person in this topic, but. Uh... Entities from other planes getting up to shenanigans. I had to leave because I, I was about to die. There was the lady in yellow. She was speaking in migraines. I think you're also doing the same. I'll take a sip of my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Conspicuous he might be coffee. speaking in riddles, but he means literally... She spoke, and it caused pain. Who? A lot of Who pain. was this person that was spoke? Apparently, it was Sarah. Sarah who? Sarah, other, other, uh, Sarah from the other plane. Uh, and as Silas was mentioning earlier, it might not be her. It might, it might have been some entity possessing her. We, there's a lot of things we don't know. In fact, there's very few things we do know. <laughs> and Melora finishes, Sarah Finch. And there's a puzzled expression that comes across uh, 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 Verendel's face. Uh, Annie, please make an insight check. Oh. Insight. Eleven. Eleven? There's a strange look that passes across Verendel's face, but it passes quickly. Specifically at the mention of Sarah Finch. I don't see how that's okay. Do I notice anything? Um, you can make an insight check at disadvantage. Ah, oh, that 22 would have been really nice. So 15. It would have. The 15 is pretty good. Uh, yeah, there's a look that passes across Verendel's face. He knows the name Sarah Finch. He probably knows it pretty well. Uh-oh. Verendel is also mm. one of the most prominent citizens in the town and comes from a wealthy family. Oh. Okay. I don't know what is, what all happened, but it wasn't. There was multiple things that kind of happened at once. Oh yeah, we also discovered that the diamond is actually the Baron's uh, brother. What? The Baron... I didn't yep. even know the Baron had a brother. 
Yep. Had, I guess. <laughs> and is trying to kill the Baron because the Baron was a pirate who left him for dead. Okay. And who might have also had something to do with the sinking of uh, the Coriospis, which now I'm trying to figure out how that might have had anything to do with it. What's the Coriopsis? I... Th th this is a that that would have been something that Annie let lets about, and she's like, "I don't even know how it's involved. I just know that it's a ship that disappeared with important people on it forty years ago." All right. So the party related somehow to a ship that was lost 40 years ago. And Sarah Finch was somehow involved in all of this. And he kind of quirks an eyebrow at, at Melora, kind of, really? And Melora just sort of nods her head with a little bit of a tight lip, kind of almost you know, seething anger a little bit. Uh, and, Sarah Finch just seems to be involved uh we don't know. Like, it was my first time seeing her at the party. But she seems to be hanging out with a lot of rich and or powerful people, and she she seems to play the act of being just uh, airhead arm candy, but I, I think she's up to some more uh, sinister things. She's I have very, no very this. dangerous, says Melora, looking directly at Silas. <laughs> Okay. okay, what did Melora say when she looked at me? She's very, very dangerous, apparently. Kind of repeating and also slightly mocking what you said. Um, She's possibly dangerous. We're not sure, but yeah, there is a chance that she is very dangerous. Okay. If she is the same extra planar entity that caused the world to shift. I realize I might sound crazy right now. Well, no crazy. You were there, you know, things rest. happened. No crazier than my own memories, although they're vague. All right, so what about the shadows that I was remembering? Was that, that was the diamond, wasn't it? There was shadow panthers, like cats made of shadows. Oh, yeah. I do remember something about that. Yeah, I remember one of them picked a fight with you, or you picked a fight with one of them. It's like everybody who was transformed took on the characteristics of their own masks and some were either laughing laughing hysterically or very aggressive now you can see him rubbing his sleeve a little bit and just where the edge of his sleeve is you can see that there's a, a red mark um, from a scratch probably and i guess any damage taken in the other world got transferred to the real world all right. So what are we looking at here? I, I still don't understand. What happened to the Baroness? Is that part of this or is that just a coincidence? What do you mean what happened to the Baroness? Well, this whole thing was to celebrate her recovery. But did the illness have something to do with this too or just the recovery? Or was that nothing at all? Was it just, just happened to be at this party? I have a feeling that uh, the Baron and the Baroness may have made deals with other entities to get their health back, but I can't prove that. It's just a hunch, but it's a possibility. And he kind of leans in close to the table, lowers his voice a bit. I suppose the question I don't want to ask is are the Baron and Baroness dangerous for Elthwater, for this region? I don't know. Honestly. 
It feels like ever since we've got here, it, it's difficult to tell who is good and who isn't. I've gotten pretty good at determining who is an asshole and who is a good person, but I'm not always correct. All right. My answer would be I don't know. I feel like there's a part of this that is a family situation in between the Baron and his brother. There is and everything that has come from that and all of the harm that has come from that to everyone else, which in itself is not good for Ralph Water. Yeah, the Diamond was constantly talking about his vengeance. And that then there's the aspect of it that is the Baroness's illness, which they seem to have made deals with dangerous beings um, without possibly fully knowing the ramifications of those choices. And then there's those other beings that are involved with it that also mentioned what what was the dragon's name? The uh, damn it. Because I remember Euro Zezalak. Yes. Yes. Or Euro Zezalak. that also some, somehow bring a very dangerous ancient dragon into the picture. Yeah, so that could be very bad for Elfar. Wait, there's a dragon involved now? Look, I know that it sounds crazy. It's a lot to take in, you have to admit. But I have not lied to you about anything that has happened. No, I don't believe you have. I know that this sounds crazy and far-fetched, but there is something going on with those two that I think might even just be two separate things that are chaotic in itself, merging together as one situation. That each other might not even be fully aware of what's going on with the other. And Melora's kind of looking back and forth, trying to figure out if the dragon bit was a joke. And kind of realizing that nobody's laughing about it. Wait. You mean like the big... Lizards of legends? Yep. Oh. Okay, sure. Oh, yeah, and yeah, there, why not? there was a talking crow, and uh, I, I, there was supposed to be a toad, but it got exploded somehow. Okay. Sure. Why not? Do we have. The crow was kind of condescending, actually. Oh, yeah. Crows can be like that. And you can, you kind of, you don't even have to roll with your insight. You can kind of <laughs> see that Melora is getting a little overwhelmed by all of this. Um, she knew something weird had happened, but a whole yeah. other box of weird just got opened up. <laughs> it's like, up. welcome to the club. <laughs> She's holding this on. This shit dude. happens all the time. Let me tell you about the giant body parts that were in the ocean. <laughs> uh-huh, sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, a little bit of deflection, it seems to be her her managing uh, thing. Verando is getting quieter and quieter as this conversation is going on. All right. Well... It looks like we still have a lot of things to figure out. Oh, yeah. I'll say. We went in there for answers and ended up with more questions. Well, you came out. That's the important part. That's the important part. Mm -hmm. I okay. didn't look in pretty rough shape, but my mind was like in tatters. So, besides paying Maybe attention to... Maybe people thought I was to... just drunk, hopefully. <laughs> besides paying attention to the people that my father 
states. Oh, I don't want to use that word. Um, uh, holds on to a fancy. No, it gets gets worse. Anyway, besides paying attention to her, and, and maybe he's not dating her. Maybe, maybe she's just manipulating him. Sure, that makes. So it in better. that case, your father didn't choose that. Yeah, I feel so much better about that. I'm pretty certain he chose. You've seen her. Yep. You're pretty sure what? I didn't understand what you said. <laughs> I'm pretty sure her father knows exactly what he's doing. Uh oh. But does he know what's getting done to him? I, I, phrasing oh, probably I not. <laughs> but I'm pretty Psychologically, sure he, does he know what's getting done to him? <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's a willing participant in some of what's going on. <laughs> Sarah does have her um, wiles, ways. Says Varendel, suddenly realizing that he probably shouldn't have said that. And Annie's just very much focused on like her spreadsheet of organizing the information that she has. So she doesn't hear the whole like record scratch moment. <laughs> <laughs> so back to the dragon. <laughs> Deflect. No, really, besides just watching in on her and making sure my father's okay, what else can I do? What else do what else do you need? How can I help? I'm not sure at this point. Can you kill a dragon? Haven't tried. Sure, let's give it a try. Do I need to kill a dragon? I don't think we need to kill a dragon. Well, they said something about killing Yet. a dragon. Yet. Yet. Okay. In which well, case, we probably corner. can't kill a dragon. <laughs> we'll put that on the shelf for now, then. I'll start working on my dragon-killing abilities right away. But in the meantime... In every group, each member has their own things that they can do and their own part to play. You have your part to play. That is watching your father. Okay. Your part is not dealing with what the rest of what's going on. Um, Medric, because if, she's sitting closest to you and you know her a little bit more, you can see her arms tensing. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Is that an insight check? Uh, you can, if you want. Oh, not 20. So 29 total? <laughs> yeah, she's, nice. she's getting furious. <laughs> she does not like the language of, now, little girl, all you have to do is stay by the side and let the adults take care of it. That's what she's hearing. Mm -hmm. And she's... Yeah. Just about ready to launch um, across the table and Silas get slapped, Silas. Look, I'll just mumble under my breath, damn it, Silas. <laughs> she can help, even what? if it's... If you, even if we're not going to, like, throw her at a dragon. Or... That's my point. She can help. Just as Verendel can help, everyone here can help. But everyone has their own certain skills, knowledges, and abilities. And those just, abilities have to be put to use properly. Uh, with the twenty, how with the twenty that I rolled, uh, how good is Melora at social interactions? As in, like uh, social engineering, like getting information out of people without them knowing they're getting fish for information. Uh, Would I know that? Or I don't think you've had a chance to see her try that too much. You okay. do know that she's a bit rough around the edges. Um, she she. Probably in chatting, you would have she would have told you that th that she did do the caravan leading for a lot of caravans because it takes her away from people. Mm -hmm. She finds oh, okay. people to be somewhat. So she's not a charisma type. Times. <laughs> uh, she's not a charisma character by any stretch um, okay. because she does get sometimes impatient with people. Uh, she genuinely does love her father though and does worry for him, even though he d he's kind of indifferent to her a little bit. Um. And even though, too, um, it wasn't necessarily her idea to accompany you to the ball, but she was happy that she did, or to the, okay. the party. Um, but she's also one that, she literally gets her hands dirty. She's not someone to, to stand by and let work be done. Okay. So My point is here. not that anybody at this table is incapable. 
but there are certain things going on that most people can't even get involved in. We need your help in, look, in seeing what's going on with your dad. Do you normally deal with the paperwork that, that, that your dad deals with? I have at times. It was necessary to learn that part of the business, and every time I was away on a, on a travel, I needed to be the one that caught the books up properly when we were there. Yeah. So if you could eat, keep an eye on the books for anything suspicious, and also, without putting yourself in danger, keep an eye on Sarah Finch. Let us know who she is associating with. That could be helpful. As I've mentioned, like Silas is not, even though he may sound condescending, he he does have a point because if Sarah Finch is this entity that we encountered in the dreamland, like, I, w I wouldn't dare challenge her. And I'm pretty powerful. Everything we do has to be quiet. And the more people that get involved the harder it is to keep things quiet. But um, okay, so this is going to ask Annie for the bag of holding for a second. I'll give it to him. Right. He reaches in, he's a, and he specifically makes sure that, that uh, Melora notices that he's speaking quieter now. And he says, has your have you seen anything like this around your father's business and he'll open up the bag and he'll just pull out the vase far enough for her to see and for her to see the kind of writing that's on it and then he'll put it right back in yeah because th those are kind of a big deal and they're very dangerous so if, if you could keep an eye on those i mean that will oh. definitely be a big help <laughs> sorry if i interrupted and yeah, I'll be like, oh yeah, and that's part of it too. I forgot about that. And then yeah. you see me erasing some of my notes. <laughs> um, well, Laura looks a little confused. I mean, my, da my dad does work with all kinds of artisans. Is this a particular model or a kind of thing? Yeah. These Blade are very old. Of... Okay, old, all right. They are... I believe from a culture that was called the Athlonians. If you yeah. find one, we need to know, and it needs to stay sealed. If it's already been opened, that's fine. But if you find one, do not open it. Does your dad have any dealings with a fellow called Clockwinder, by any chance? I can check the books. I don't know all the people that's also a with. name of interest who collects these vases. And you can see her kind of making mental notes. Silas looks at her and looks at Varen down and says, do you really want to know what's going on? Well, and he probably should, considering he runs the city guard. I mean, simultaneously, Silas both of them end up answering, yes. <laughs> and there's an eagerness in Varendel. Partially, you get the sort of professional eagerness from Varendel. From from Melora, it's sort of the ironic yes, because she's been literally asking for this for the last hour. Uh, Silas has his very serious face on. It's an um, illusion. <laughs> possibly highlighted a little bit with some magic. Um, this is... Silas takes up the dad voice. Mm. <laughs> There are things that shouldn't be t shouldn't be talked about, but I think in this case, it may give you an overview. Uh, should we all go to Annie's room with our meals first, so uh, we're out of the? Uh... I would assume by now the meals are basically been cleared away. Okay. Just coffee. We should probably go to a more quiet area. Less, yeah. Less ears. Yeah, let's adjourn to Annie's room. It's nearby. 
Um, and once everyone's there, you say, this, okay, this is not easy for me to explain and not because I don't want to explain it. It's confusing. And this may not in fact be the truth, but just what I think the truth is. That is as little as we, uh, that's how little we know. At some point before now, some time ago, we don't know exactly when, I believe that a god was killed. Oh, you're going that far. Yeah, I'm <laughs> giving them the overview. I want them to know that this is something epic and there's really serious shit going on. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's why everyone is confused in this forgotten time. Yes, as as entities attempt to either take advantage of this or remove any trace of the existence of this god, it has messed things up. Time is not passing the same between every island. Sometimes space is changing around. I mean, as in a map. A map might show an island in one place now, but that island may not be there. It may have been moved or it may have gone. That's why people can't remember th the past clearly right now. Both of you, I know, have periods that you just can't, you can't make the events fit together right. That was caused by this event. Now, because um, because there is a god that is no longer around, there are different entities trying to take their place. And a lot of what's going on here comes from that. These vases contain connections to an ancient sorcerer of some kind who is trying to bring back the Titans to kill off the rest of the gods. You may remember a certain arm floating out of the bay at one, I, about two months ago. Or a cliffside exploding and some organ flying out. Yes. That was Clockminder, by the way. Well, that was... Clockwinder, who is an agent of this ancient sorcerer. The one who likes vases or vases. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. We need to collect these so that the sorcerer doesn't become more powerful. In addition, there are entities trying, who are straight up trying to take the place of this god because in the spiritual world, there's a there's an empty spot, like an island was suddenly removed from the sea, and now there's this massive roiling storm trying to fill in that spot. This is what we're dealing with. We're not dealing with someone who just with someone who's trying to mess with your dad or who maybe is after the Baron. There are major things going on that we are barely getting our minds around and occasionally stopping something from doing something bad. Who knows, We're basically Sarah putting a band-aid on things while we try to figure out what's causing what's happening. I think Malora... Who knows, Sarah Finch might even be one of the entities trying to take this god's place. Malora Which is why of, we don't want you going head to head against her. Malora kind of just sort of shot, nods her head, huh, uh huh, and kind of walks out, walks over to the window and kind of starts staring out the window a little bit. Yeah, um, welcome to the club. 
Uh, Verendel, <laughs> though, uh, turns to look at Silas with some sharpness. Oh. Is, is this what your people are doing? I've heard some stories, but I hadn't been able to verify them. It is not what my people are doing, no. We... We do worship an entity from another realm, but my people are fishermen. I think that's probably they, going to require a deception roll, because it is literally what your people are trying to do and what you specifically are trying to do. Well, no, yeah. Well, that's because he's trying to do it, and his aunt and uncle are trying to do it. Uh, but yeah. No, he will. Uh, it's a it's a little bit of stretching a truth there. Yeah. Um, no, I I can get that. Seven. Oof. He is a proficient liar. Seventy is that what you said? <laughs> Seventeen. Seventeen. I would have bought seventy, uh, but we'll just see here. Um, okay, so that would be his bullshit meter, which is insight. Okay. Yes. As insightful as he probably should be. Everybody has their limits. All right, let's see here. Mm hmm. Uh... Oof. <laughs> yeah. Natural one. Natural one. So, um, okay. he sort of nods his head and. and, and uh, Burl no Reeve. He's really easy to lie to. <laughs> and Silas was totally not at the party last night. Wink, wink, smirk, smirk. Yeah, no, that that part's already. I, I, I think uh, he rolled like miserably low as well when I was introducing myself as well. Yeah, yeah. I think I think um, the, the the reaction is kind of a, a serious uh, nod of the head and kind of keep going. Now, while I believe that perhaps the mother would be a a good one to fill the hole so nothing else gets in, that is not something that my people are working towards. They are, they are like anyone else in the bay. They're looking for a good life. They're looking to bring in lots of fish, uh, despite what you may have heard of them. As I said, I was only able to find rumors and it's good to put some some truth behind them. Yes, yes, truth. Tasty, tasty truth. So over by the window, Melora kind of sighs a little bit. So if I'm able to understand all this, and I'm pretty quick at picking up a lot of things, you're telling us that the world is kind of broken and a whole lot of people want to get their pieces. Pretty and much. It's a good idea not to let them get the pieces. Right? Mm hmm. And there's a whole lot uh, of. Not, not necessarily a whole lot of people, but a, a number of. Well, a number of beings. I don't know if I would call them people. So maybe that might explain that? And she points out the window. What? Silas wants to get to the window fast, but he also doesn't want to see what's going on. Metric will stand up immediately and look Sorry. out the window. I would imagine most of you end up uh, looking at at least part yeah. of the window. And in the street behind the inn, um, there is a strange um, scar that seems to be hovering about four feet off the ground. It's, it's diagonally hovering. Uh, it seems to be shimmering a little bit, a little wisps of, of, of a sort of gray silver light are bursting out from it that every once in a while also reveal a bit of, of red uh, and uh, kind of a yellowish color. And the scar, as you watch in a second or two, cra cracks wider. You can hear people concerned on the street pointing to it, backing away. Uh, and in an instant, the scar opens up like a, almost like an eye, like an angled eye in the sky. But instead of a, a, uh, a globe of the iris inside, uh, it is this, this pit of darkness. Uh, out of which fly four dark beings who flitter up into the sky, and in through it steps one enormous 14-foot uh, reddish-haired, uh, ugly uh, uh, 
sort of almost animalistic creature that steps through on two smaller legs and two larger arms, uh, muddling its way through. The, the scar collapses behind them, and the screams are heard outside as you see some things come through. And I think that's where we'll start next time. Okay, as the camera goes to close, Silas says, well, shit. Fuck. <laughs> to quote the Witcher. <laughs> <laughs> But I think that's a good place to button it for uh, for today. Um, thank you so much, guys, for for uh, for putting up with it. I know we had to kind of muddle our way through, and there's all kinds of things we've all forgotten over the three years of lore that I've dumped on you. Um, Probably end good. of February for the for the notes. Okay, end of February. <laughs> I will I will look up those notes and try to remember which parts I was referring to. Um, I, I have notes uh, on my. Uh, the, the joys of being able to see when things were edited on an Excel spreadsheet. Um, I have set back, back next time I try to research Gaetano's notes, it'll take a, a second week. That, that modification was made on the 28th of February. Perfect. All right. Well, now those notes have, have a bit more relevance and a bit more importance. Um, note to all the GMs out there, seed your world with all kinds of things, and eventually they pick up on them. And they'll remind you of things you've forgotten about, which is great. <laughs> Um, it's literally in the spreadsheet of things that I have that I like that I own that are useful. So in, in case it's not entirely obvious, um, this is an offer of essentially two minions for the party. Uh, Melora and Verendel will both work with the party. Obviously they have their own, uh, their own needs to occasionally go on, but they will become nice. NPCs that will be under your control for, uh, Ooh. for combat purposes. Uh, but otherwise, or combat or other encounter purposes, but otherwise uh, the, the personalities will come from me. Uh, and this is the part of the, uh, the building of a legacy or the building of a, of a team to tackle larger problems, as you all have pointed out. These problems are pretty big. Um, that will mean that occasionally, for example, you can say, well, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to send Melora to do this. Or Varendel should be the one to look into this sort of thing. So you can send NPCs to go and do certain subquests or to do certain uh, features, so just as a sort of formal. So next we gotta get do Doc Bitterhorn and Doctor Dr. Marigold to join our party. I mean, they're, they're, they're they are possible. definitely involved. It's possible. Uh, both of them are NPCs at the moment. Dudek himself is scheduled to leave, so there's oh, gonna yeah. be a, an official. Yeah, but I've we've got connection through the book. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and he can be kind of a resource at the moment. He's not he's not graduated to a party member yet. Um, but uh, basically, we've been through shit. Yeah, <laughs> the five yeah. of us have been through shit. Absolutely, uh, the party was a a a, uh, a crucible, and they came out on the other side stronger than ever. So uh, thanks, thanks guys for for playing. Um, thanks for running. We should be back again in two weeks. I think we'll have to take a, a bit of a hiatus after that due to the gaming convention. Yeah, and Beacon uh, and I'm uh, I'm at a it's it's a small convention in like Kentucky. It's called a long expected party. It's obviously Lord of the Rings based. But I'll nice. be away on the weekend of, yeah, the so October we'll, October second. So we'll have a little bit of a delay in getting back, but otherwise we should be back in two weeks. Uh, yep. Once again, thanks for all of you who might be watching. Uh, thanks for watching it on YouTube later on. Sorry about the missing episode, but we've tried to fill in some of the details here, and then we'll just fill them all in later, and it'll probably be different, but that's okay. <laughs> um, but uh, until then, uh, once again, thanks to my players. Thanks to the GM and pray for audio. <laughs>